Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Burry Stadium in New Wilmington, Pennsylvania. Today on the PAC Sports Network, college football as the Waynesburg University Yellow Jackets visit the Westminster College Titans. I'm Randy Gore along with Justin Piles for today's game. And uh, this team, this uh, game today, rather, pits two teams, the Waynesburg Yellow Jackets 6-2 and two overall, 4-2 and two in PAC play. Westminster 3-4 and four overall. They are 2-3 and three in the conference standings. Uh, the Waynesburg Yellow Jackets, they need some help, but they still have hopes of a uh, PAC title uh, alive at this point in the season. And uh, they did share the conference crown last year with the WNJ president. So hopes of uh, obtaining another shared conference crown do remain for Waynesburg. Obviously, a win today would be a vital part of that to uh, continue those hopes for Westminster. They're playing the role of spoiler today, coming off a, uh, a big win last week, a 7-6 win over Bethany, as they spoiled some things for the Bison. Yeah, both these teams played... Uh very close and fourth quarter games decided in the fourth quarter against Bethany the last two weeks. Uh, Waynesburg actually dropping a game against Bethany two weeks ago on a, a long pass play with a couple minutes remaining and Westminster beating the Bison last week when pretty much you know, they were dead in the water. Less than a minute to go. Bethany just had to get off a punt. Westminster able to, to block it, recover it in the end zone and more or less steal a 7-6 win. And that 7-6 win, the block punt by Dylan Heitmeyer, senior defensive back from Peters Township. He is the PAC Special Teams Player of the Week, and rightfully so. That block punt coming with 44 seconds remaining in the game. So, as you said, Westminster seemingly dead in the water and uh, come, coming away with the block punt and a 7-6 win over Bethany. Westminster hoping that uh, perhaps some of the momentum from that uh, last second win uh, will carry over early into this game. We talked with Jeff Hand, Westminster's head coach, and uh, he said, one of the things that uh, that they needed to do was uh, was put drives together from an offensive standpoint, but also uh, gain some confidence early. And they will have the football first to start today's game. Waynesburg will be kicking off. And so an early opportunity for Westminster to try and assert themselves and gain some confidence offensively. Uh, continuing drives has been a problem, especially in the red zone, has been an issue for Westminster this season. So that's something they're going to hope to work on very early in this contest. And if you like quarterbacks, we have two of the best in the conference. We have Carter Hill from Wayne. Pittsburgh, and Dak Britt from Westminster. Different types of quarterbacks. When Britt has the ball, he likes to throw and pass, or uh, run and pass. He's a uh, dual threat that way. Hill, more of a drop back passer. Kickoff by Davis for the Yellow Jackets, received by Westminster, and scooting across the 20 yard line to the 22. The Titans on the return, stacked up by the Waynesburg special teams, and they return by Westminster by Taryn Savantes Levine, one of the wideouts for the Westminster Titans. You'll hear a lot from him today. Westminster likes to keep the football on the ground, and they have a very athletic quarterback in Dak Britt, 6'1", 205-pound senior from Battle Creek High School in Battle Creek, Michigan. And through the air, 128 of 228. Uh, for 1,000 yards, 1,612 uh, yards, seven touchdowns and seven interceptions, but again, athletic and can move the ball well with his legs. He starts in the shotgun. Dak Britt will run it himself up the middle, but Waynesburg all over that with a loss of yardage on first down back toward the 18-yard line of Westminster. So a loss of three on first down brings up a second and 13 at the Westminster 20-yard line. Glad you can be with us today on the PAC Sports Network. Westminster hosting the Waynesburg Yellow Jackets. And Dak Britt in the shotgun again. He has trips to the left side. His running back sidecar, Tyler Banks, to his left. Britt, quick pass over the middle, complete on a slant pattern across the 30 to the 32-yard line on the reception. Toby Bonnets, Bonnets a 5'7", 172-pound senior from Susquehanna High School. And that is his 22nd reception of the season. Entered today's play with 274 yards, averaging 13 yards per reception. And a pickup of 12 on that catch sets up a third down and one. So a uh, good recovery after the loss of yards on first down. Now a third and reasonable third and one. That's something Westminster needs to do. The short passing game, the running game. Uh, Waynesburg has one of the more ferocious pass rushes in the PAC. Shotgun Britt will keep it himself. Runs up the middle, has the first down to the 35-yard line. Tackle made by the Yellow Jackets. And that was Brian Gary on the stop. The free safety for Waynesburg. An outstanding uh, defensive player. Team leader in tackles with 61 entering today's action. Also a sack in four passes defensed 
a 6'3", 210 pound senior from Shaler High School. Now you don't want to see a whole bunch of open field between you and Brian Gary because you will get steamrolled. And Gary can lay on the licks. First and 10 Westminster from their own 35 yard line. And an option play going left. Pitch to Banks. Banks sifts through and is eventually bottled up at the 39-yard line of Westminster. And a timely pitch there by Dak Brett. He took a big hit, but gets the pitch out to Banks for positive yards. It was Fedorka that sniffed out Britt behind the line of scrimmage, but able to get that pitch off, and good gain for Westminster. 12.46 on a running clock first quarter. Scoreless game, Waynesburg visiting Westminster. Just underway, opening possession of the contest. Westminster starting from their own 23-yard line, picking up one first down, now faced with a second down in five. Twins to the right, now Banks motioned out of the backfield. It's a designed run for Dak Britt going left. Follows blocks to get the quarter, and he is shoved out of bounds near the lead stick. A couple runs to the boundary each way for Westminster. First two runs to the right, the last two have been to the left. And Finding good yardage there, going around the outside. Westminster offense averages 15 points per game. The Waynesburg defense allows, on average, 23 points per game. And Westminster, they have struggled in moving the football this season, uh, especially in the red zone. And uh, they are still a ways from that point. But uh, 9 of 21 in the red zone are the Westminster Titans. That's last in the PAC. So as we, as we said, talking with Coach Handy, wanted to see his team gain some confidence early. So far, a, a first down and now faced with a third and one, and Westminster wants to utilize a timeout here. Faced with that third and one, 11.57 to go in the first quarter. We are scoreless, and we'll be right back on the PAC Sports Network. We're here at Sport Clips, the new Just for Guys haircutting place to see what the buzz is about. How was it? Nice cut, nice price, professional stylist. Doesn't get any better than this. There's sports on TV at every chair. I got an awesome haircut, steam towel treatment, neck and shoulder massage. I went all the way! What are you waiting for? Sport Clips is now in your neighborhood. At Sport Clips, guys win. With two locations in Washington County, at the McMurray Shops in Peters Township and at Trinity Point in Washington. Welcome back to Bury Stadium in New Wilmington, Pennsylvania. The Westminster Titans with a third down and one from their own 44-yard line. Coach Jeff Hand of the Westminster Titans calling a timeout. Is Dak Britt under center for the first time today? Motions Banks out of the backfield, and it's a QB keeper. Dak Britt has the first down to the 47-yard line. Let's give you the starting lineups for both teams. Offensively for the Westminster Titans, Dak Britt, the quarterback, Tyler Banks, the running back, Terrence Afantes Levine at receiver, Colin Wallace, Toby Bonnets at tight end, David Wright, the offensive line, Nick Fiorentino, Mike Blair, Dan Graham, Dylan Hogue, and Vinny Nurtai. We'll give you the Waynesburg defense here momentarily as it is now a first and 10 for Westminster at their own 47-yard line. And in motion, it's a handoff to Bonnets. Bonnets fumbles the football, and Waynesburg dives on top of it. The fumble recovery in Westminster territory at the 47-yard line. Bonnets still fighting for the football, but the officials have already granted Waynesburg the ball. And the recovery by the Yellow Jackets, Tyler Gibbons. Recovering the football for Waynesburg. So first turnover of the game, and Waynesburg's offense now out on the field. Just took a hit to the side from our vantage point. Ball popped loose, and Waynesburg, excellent field position for their first possession of the game. Definitely not what Westminster needed, uh, an early turnover. They had a nice drive going there, on the ground especially, but Waynesburg, good possession here to start out the afternoon. And now Carter Hill. And the shotgun looks left, quick pass complete near sideline at the 42 of Westminster. That catch made by Andrew English. And he is the leading receiver for the Yellow Jackets this season with 660 yards, averages 12 yards per catch, and owns six touchdowns as well. Short passing game for Waynesburg and Carter Hill, the facilitator of this offense. You see a lot of quick passes. Every once in a while there'll be a handoff or some sort of draw play to keep that pass rush honest. And a fake and a Screen pass complete across the 24. Ball fumbled out of bounds by the Yellow Jackets. Willie Lavelle on the reception. And he is a productive player. Uh, Lavelle also will see some time as a running back, but that time lined up as a receiver, catching the receiver screen. 
and moves the football to the 20-yard line of Westminster. Yellow Jackets moving the football with under 11 minutes to play in the first quarter, looking for the first touchdown. That was Nate Moot who chased him out of bounds and caused that fumble out of bounds. You'll hear a lot of him today. Very active linebacker for the Titans. Play action, and Carter Hill takes a big wallop from Westminster. Sean Christofferson laid on the hit there. Christofferson, a second-team All-PAC member from a year ago. He put on that hit just about when Carter Hill was releasing the football, forced that one wayward, basically into the turf, incomplete. You mentioned the quarterbacks to start off, but this game also features a couple of great defensive linemen. Christofferson for the Titans and Brandon Fedorka for Waynesburg. They'll be in the backfield all afternoon. Second and 10 from the Westminster 20 for Waynesburg. Trips to the right, one wide out to the left, and sidecar to the right is Thomas Pallone for the Yellow Jackets. Roll out right for Carter Hill, swings it out, pass complete, far sideline, diving ahead toward the 15-yard line. Catch made by Bernie Thompson is another one of the top receivers for the Yellow Jackets, entering today's action with 606 yards and three scores. There are two Waynesburg receivers in that area. I think someone either ran the wrong route or got bumped off their route, but Hill had to scramble a little bit to find an open man. Luckily for him, English popped open right at the just the last moment, basically. He was about to pull that down and try and find some yardage himself. A fumble by Toby Bonnets has set up a short field for Waynesburg, and now a third and five from the 15. Play action roll out left. Man wide open in the left flat. Complete and into the end zone. Touchdown Waynesburg Yellow Jackets as Mike Ferrero, the tight end, coming wide open in the left flat. The senior from Shaler High School makes it 6 nothing Waynesburg. Yeah, play action to the right. Got the defense going that way. Roll back left. Ferrero all by himself, just in the flat. Little flick to him, and he waltzed into the end zone. That's his fifth touchdown reception of the season. For Carter Hill, his 24th touchdown pass of the year. We'll talk a little bit more about Hill's statistics uh, this season, and they are impressive. As now for the extra point for the Yellow Jackets, it's Alex Henry. As he is 31 of 32 on PAT attempts this season, puts the boot to it. It's up and it's through Waynesburg with a 7 to nothing lead. 10.07 on the clock, first quarter. We'll take a break on the PAC Sports Network. When you're seriously in debt, you know that feeling. It returns every time the phone rings. Things are out of control. A job you were counting on didn't come through or you got sick. No matter how it got to this point, your creditors don't care or understand, but I do. It's not too late. I can help. If you're embarrassed, overwhelmed, or frustrated, don't be. I'm not here to judge. I'm here to help, and you do need help. Please call me. There is a way out, and I'll get you there. Waynesburg Yellow Jackets converting off the turnover. Toby Bonnets with a fumble at the 47-yard line of Westminster. The Yellow Jackets drive it 47 yards for the score. 7-0 Waynesburg. A 15-yard touchdown pass to Mike Ferrero. Yeah, like clockwork, Waynesburg able to matriculate the ball down the field. A couple short passes and a nice play-action play for the touchdown pass. Very Hank Stram of you, matriculate the football down the field. Nice. I like that. So Waynesburg leading it 7 to nothing. And Waynesburg led by head coach Rick Sheppis in his ninth year. As the preceding coach to Sheppis was Jeff Hand, who is, of course, now at Westminster. For the kickoff, Alex Henry with the run-up. End over end kick received by Safantes Levine. Sifts his way, trying to find the seam. Bounces off a tackler at the 28-yard line and is piled on at the 30. A good physical return there by Safante Levine. He bounced off a couple tacklers, and I thought he was going to break through a third, but there was a jacket down there at the bottom of the pile, grabbed his ankle and would not let go, and he's out of that pile hobbling a little bit as he comes to the sideline. Looks like he might have got a little ankle twist or something. Immediately on all fours as soon as he reaches the Westminster bench area, so keep an eye on that. First and 10, Westminster from their own 30-yard line. They were moving the football before that fumble by Bonnets halted the opening possession for the Titans. Empty set for Britt and a quick pass on a slant to Bonnets. He's met up two yards deep, catch made. At the 32, officials look as if they're going to give him the 33-yard line on that catch before Bonnets shoved backwards. So uh, 
Solid pickup on first down with a short slant pattern. Uh, let's give you the Waynesburg defense. Defensive linemen, Brandon Fedorka, Mike Riddleman, Zach Machuga, and JT Thompson at linebacker Kyle Ritchie for the Yellow Jackets, Ronnie Skidder and John Sakura, And the defensive backfield, Stephen Holt, Marvin Sampson, at cornerback the safeties, Brian Gary and Logan McEnany. And the, the starting lineups brought to you by Sport Clips this afternoon. Pass left side complete to Colin Wallace. He has a first down across the 40 to the 41-yard line. First time we heard from number four this afternoon. He's their big play guy along the outside. And Colin Wallace, we've heard a, quite a bit about him. Big-time receiver for the Titans. and They don't pass it all that much. They're not a pass-heavy attack, not like what you see from the Waynesburg Yellow Jackets. But when they do put the ball in the air, Colin Wallace is the go-to man. 48 catches for 761 yards and seven touchdowns at all PAC selection from a year ago. Design run up the middle off the shotgun snap for Dak Britt. Not much there, Waynesburg, with a quick stop as John Sakura amongst those on the tackle for the Yellow Jackets. And Ronnie Skinner also first man in. Very aggressive Waynesburg defense. All around the ball, all around the ball carrier, and able to get Britt off his feet. And so far, Wayne, or Westminster has gone with a, a steady diet of Dak Brett runs in the first quarter. We mentioned one of the offensive keys for Jeff Hand. Rick Shep has said defensively, Waynesburg uh, has to keep their eyes on uh, Dak Britt. Good athlete at quarterback, and uh, they always have to to pick him up. Uh, he's really the focus of the Waynesburg defense today. It's a give to Banks and nowhere to go. Loss of yardage trapped back inside the 40-yard line of the Yellow Jackets defense. Very pumped up to start this game, especially after that fumble recovery now. Yellow Jackets feeling it as uh, dropped for a yard loss. Tyler Banks. Banks the leading rusher for the Westminster offense. 364 yards this season and five touchdowns. But a loss of one on that carry, a third down and long now for Westminster. 7.41 and rolling first quarter, 7-0 Waynesburg the score. And we apologize in advance for our clock. Uh, clock not operating today, but we'll keep you updated on the clock situation. Down to 7.28 and counting. As Dak Britt on a third and long. Scrambles right, trapped to the pocket. Now escapes to the left, has some space across the 45 and gets ahead near the lead marker. And it appears that Dak Britt, some impromptu running, has the first down. Able to break away from a couple of potential sack artists in the backfield. Brian Gary saw him from across the field, made a beeline for him, but Britt too fast by the time Gary was able to get to him. Britt had already passed that first down marker and scampered out of bounds. Well, one of the Yellow Jackets coming from the right end, it might have been Fedorka, not sure, but uh, one of them almost had Dak Britt in the backfield, but almost as if he had eyes in the back of his head, was able to escape to the left. Had he scrambled right, it would have been a sack and maybe a turnover. I think it was but Fedorka and Josh Tolliver also in there. So first and 10 now from Waynesburg's 48. And as the hit made, the pass released incomplete as it flutters harmlessly to the turf near sideline. Intended target is Bonnets, but big lick laid on there by the Yellow Jackets. And that was Tolliver in Britt's face for the second consecutive play. Westminster might want to think about putting a tight end or doubling Tolliver. That's a second straight play where he's been in the backfield pretty quickly and disrupted the, the Titans' play. It's Oliver, four sacks this season and a couple of QB hurries already. Second and 10 for Westminster. Waynesburg leading by a touchdown. Clock stopped at 6.51. Britt in the shotgun. Sidecar to his right is Tyler Banks. Quick pass left, complete, threading the needle to Colin Wallace. Linebacker underneath almost got to that one for Waynesburg. But uh, accurate pass to Wallace, sets up a third down and reasonable, third down and five. He's up third down and five. Actually, it was the safety, McEnany, who almost got his hands on that football underneath. But accurate toss by Dak Britt. Trips to the right for Westminster on a third and five. They need to get to the Waynesburg 38 for a first down. Shotgun snap, and it's a keeper up the middle. And Brett has the first down, but coughs up the football. Recovered by Waynesburg and tackled back at the 26-yard line. It's Stephen Holt with a fumble recovery. Second turnover of the game for Westminster. And Brett already had the first down there. Tried to do a little too much by bouncing over someone on the ground. I think it was the Waynesburg body on the ground. And when he did that, the ball came free. He was hit from the side. A ball came free, and another drive ended on a fumble. 
6.01 on the clock with the fumble recovery by Stephen Holt, the 5'8", 160-pound senior. So turnover is the name of the game early for the Waynesburg defense. Now the offense back on the field for the Yellow Jackets. Up by a touchdown. Carter Hill with trips to the right. One sidecar to his left and a wideout to his left as well. And Hill swings it out right. Pass complete and tackle made at the Waynesburg 29-yard line. And Willie Lavelle with the reception for the Yellow Jackets. Let's give you the Waynesburg starting offense today. Again, brought to you by Sport Clips. Carter Hill, the starting quarterback. Tommy Pallone, the starting tailback today. Jake DeGilio, the starting fullback. Andrew English and Bernie Thompson at wideout. Tight end Mike Ferreira will give you the offensive line after this next play. Second and eight for Waynesburg. Looks left now, will screen it out right. And reception made by Bernie Thompson as he's tackled at the Westminster, or excuse me, at the Waynesburg 32 yard line. Let's give you the offensive line for Waynesburg. Jake Brumley, David Bobby, Tyler Powell, Rob Kinjerski, and Nick Sappy on the O-line. The Westminster defense, defensive line, Sean Cronenwetter, Rich Ellaby, Sean Christofferson, linebackers Justin Shaw, Corey Neal, Nate Smoot, Taylor Heinrich, defensive backfield Joe Glennon, Gino Mariano, Josh Beistel, and David Bazzacco. And again, our starting lineups today brought to you by Sport Clips. Third down and four for Waynesburg, 4.43 and counting on the first quarter clock. Deep ball wide open across the 30 to the far sideline. It's Thompson, and he is angled out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. Well, Westminster talked with Jeff Hand earlier, and he said that one of the things defensively they had to avoid was giving up the big play. Uh, Westminster's defense in a negative fashion has had a propensity to give up the big play. There was a big shot there, deep ball to Thompson. Yeah, just not accounted for. Got behind the, the defensive backfield of the Titans, and. Scampered down the sidelines, huge play for Waynesburg, and they're set up again. And Thompson, no stranger to big plays. He actually caught the, the game-winning touchdown on the opening week uh, against Muskingum for Waynesburg, able to pull out a victory down at Wiley. An elusive receiver in the open field, Bernie Thompson. He's out of the game for the time being after that first down catch. Waynesburg looking to run it for the first time tonight, but uh, we have penalty flags. That looks will like, halt this play. Looked like a pulling guard pulled too early. False start. 17 to the offense. Oh, Five or a receiver. Still first down. So first and 10 becomes a first and 15 from the Westminster 24-yard line. Carter Hill has uh, really become a fantastic quarterback for the Waynesburg offense and a big reason why the offensive philosophy has changed from predominantly run to now predominantly pass. Uh, Waynesburg last year had the top rushing attack in the PAC with over 2,000 yards and 19 touchdowns. Almost a complete reversal from last year is uh, Waynesburg. They put the ball in the air quite a bit. First and 15. They will run it here and going left. The Yellow Jackets inside the 20 yard line. It's Jake Forsyth, 5'11", 235 pound junior from Uniontown High School. He's a big transfer from Cal U. Yeah, emphasis on the word big. You won't see a whole lot of sidestepping from him. He'll go straight ahead, and run you over. Was an All-State player all-state selection while at Uniontown, but as you said, not much, uh, nothing fancy about Jake Forsyth. Here I come, try and stop me, and good pick up on first down as it's now a second down and eight, so pick up of seven on that preceding run for Forsyth. Carter Hill, shotgun. Looks right, rolls right, and miscommunication there. Bernie Thompson, the intended target. Thompson had waited out in the flat for a while, and then as he decided to go upfield, that's when the pass was delivered, incomplete. Yeah, Mariano on him, but he had a big buffer, about 10 yard cushion there. And the screen pass was set up, and then right when Hill threw the path, the area was vacated. Thompson started out on a, on a route towards the end zone. Glad you can be with us today on the PAC Sports Network. Three minutes to go first quarter. Yellow Jackets up by a touchdown. I'm Randy Gore along with Justin Piles, Cat Guy, and our producer. Caitlin Edwards, our camera person today on the network. Third down and eight for the Yellow Jackets. As he typically is, shotgun for Carter Hill. Has a man open, caught, touchdown.
touchdown, Waynesburg Yellow Jackets, Zach Kappen, the other tight end. Mike Ferrero with a touchdown. Now it's Zach Kappen with a touchdown reception. 13 to nothing, Waynesburg. Kappen just a corner out to the end zone. Thompson was the receiver out there. He sat down, forced the corner up, made the tight end open. Corner of the end zone, just like you draw it up. Touchdown, Waynesburg. 17 yard touchdown catch for Zach Kappen. Second touchdown pass of the game for Carter Hill and Waynesburg off and running. Off and passing, I guess you should say. 13-0 in for the extra point. Alex Henry. And flags thrown by the officials. This will be another false start penalty on Waynesburg. The place kicker, Alex Henry. The holder, Tom Pallone. The long snapper is Justin Layton for Waynesburg. It's going to be a tight end in the Yellow Jackets offense today. Both touchdown passes caught by a tight end. And Kappen collecting his third touchdown pass of the season. Sophomore from Deer Lakes High School. 2.55 to go in the first quarter, and Waynesburg has opened up a two-touchdown lead. Extra point by Henry. Five yards back, but it's still good for Henry and the Yellow Jackets. 14-0 the score. Again, 2.55 to go in the first quarter. We'll take a quick break on the PAC Sports Network. For three generations, Sharps Furniture has been proud to serve Southwestern PA with their brand of personal service. Being an authorized dealer for Lazy Boy, they are dedicated to providing the finest quality products made here in the U.S. of A. Looking for custom upholstery? Sharps carries a large selection of upholstery to choose from, all made in America. And their friendly staff will deliver right to your front door. Sharps Furniture, your authorized Lazy Boy dealer. Family owned, family operated since 1917. Located just off I-70, exit 19B in Washington, PA. Back at Westminster, Yellow Jackets owning a 14 to nothing lead over the Westminster Titans. And Carter Hill, two touchdown passes already. And Hill has five games this season with 300 plus yards passing. He has six games this year with three or more passing touchdowns. And he's well on his way to adding on to those totals. Yeah, absolutely. Eight of 10, 119, and two touchdowns. So he has as many touchdowns as incompletions. And Waynesburg, you said they were off passing. Just one rushing play so far. That was the, the seven yard run by Forsyth on the last series. Henry end over end kick received at the 20-yard line by the Titans. There's a seam up the middle, but bumping into one of his own blockers on the return. Westminster's Cody Allward tripped up, but nonetheless good starting field position for the Westminster Titans. Uh, that could have been a lot more or maybe a touchdown. Yeah, if he doesn't get bumped and can outrun the kicker, he's in the end zone. Key for Westminster on this drive is just keep doing what you've been doing very successful on the ground especially with quarterback Dak, Dak Britt but you can't turn the ball over you have to hold on to the ball it's a little bit cooler today and a little bit damp maybe that ball's a little bit slippery but you have to keep keep a hold of that good ball security practice good ball security especially around this ball hawking defense of Waynesburg straight pass broken up by Fedorka comes up limping on the end of that play but uh, leaping up for the batted pass Brandon Fedorka yeah, he definitely read that wide receiver screen, almost caught that, and I think he overextended himself and kind of pulled something on that on that reach. Again, a cool day, so he was motioning to the sideline, but he is staying in right now. Cool overcast day in western Pennsylvania, but it's western Pennsylvania and it's November now, so I guess to be expected. Second and 10 Westminster trailing 14-0, 246 on the first quarter clock. Dak Britt shotgun with Banks to his right. Looks left, goes left, diving catch made by the Westminster Titans. And that is Coleman Mazur tied in with the catch. Mazur from North Hills High School. Excuse me, Dave Wright, my apologies. Wrong team. David Wright with the catch. 6'5", 255 pound senior for the Westminster Titans. And in his spare time he plays third base for the Mets. <laughs> yes. No, not that David Wright. This is the David Wright from Ohio. 17 catches, 265 yards, and two touchdowns this season. Three-yard reception makes it third and seven. Trips to the right for Dak Britt, handles a low snap. Pocket stands well, but now Flush will 
Scramble to the left and has the first down, does Dak Britt. So using his legs as he will do quite a bit from time to time. Last season, Dak Britt had set the school record for rushing in a single game by a quarterback. He did it twice last season. The most he had rushed for was 172 yards in a single game. So uh, he most certainly can beat an opposing team with his legs just as well as his arm. Eight carries, 44 yards so far. So Who knows, we might see that mark eclipse today if he keeps at this pace. Westminster has moved the ball well, but they've turned it over twice. That's been the problem. Handoff Banks going left and following a pulling lineman. Gets a yard on the play, does Banks. Well, the Yellow Jackets going after that football. Saw a couple hands in there, reaching for it, trying to punch it out. 49-yard line of Waynesburg. Westminster, their second trip into Waynesburg territory. The last trip ended on a fumble by Dak Britt that was recovered by Stephen Holt. Now to 118 on the clock here in the first quarter. Second down and nine, Westminster. Three wide, two to the right. Tyler Banks, the sidecar to the right of Dak Britt. Britt stands in the pocket, wants to go deep. Looking for Colin Wallace. Jump ball intercepted by Waynesburg. Marvin Sampson with the interception at his own 13-yard line. Looked like Wallace misjudged that ball. Carried a little bit. He pulled up and didn't have good position to go up for it. Now that ball tossed high to the air, high arcing pass by Britt. It was a jump ball, and uh, as it turned out, Marvin Sampson was in better position for the rebound. And Wallace definitely had the height if he went up at the, the right position, but Sampson positioned himself better. A third turnover in the first quarter for Westminster as a result. Sampson's first interception of the season, the product from Central Dauphin East High School. Third turnover of the game by the Westminster Titans. First pick by the Waynesburg defense. And the offense back on the field again. Carter Hill, quick pass complete at the 15-yard line. Good move at the 15, up ahead to the 20. Is the catch made by Tim Cooper. Looks like we have an injury on the field right now. Play is stopped, and there's a Titan down. And West, Westminster player down at the 20-yard line before a second down and two play for the Waynesburg offense at their own 21-yard line. We're down to 47 seconds on the clock first quarter. Scores 14-0 Waynesburg with the injury timeout. We'll also grab a quick timeout as well. We'll be right back on the PAC Sports Network. When you are in need of fast, affordable, and professional voiceovers, contact TimeAd Productions. TimeAd Productions offers voice services for business presentations, documentary narrations, radio television imaging and commercials, movie trailers, corporate phone systems, websites, audiobooks, and more. Visit or contact us online at www.timeadproductions.com. We're here at Sport Clips, the new Just for Guys haircutting place to see what the buzz is about. How was it? Nice cut, nice price, professional stylist. Doesn't get any better than this. There's sports on TV at every chair. I got an awesome haircut, steam towel treatment, neck and shoulder massage. I went all the way! What are you waiting for? Sport Clips is now in your neighborhood. At Sport Clips, guys win. With two locations in Washington County, at the McMurray Shops in Peters Township and at Trinity Point in Washington. Gino Mariano being helped off the field for the Westminster Titans as he was the player nicked up on that last play, catch by Tim Cooper and Mariano in the area of that tackle. And again, being helped off the field, we wish him well as we do all of our athletes in any of the games we broadcast on the PAC Sports Network. Waynesburg leading this one 14-0 late in the first quarter, 47 seconds remaining in the first quarter. 
as the Waynesburg defense has produced three turnovers. And so far, the Waynesburg offense has produced two touchdowns and seeing what they can do here after that third turnover produced by the defense. Carter Hill in the shotgun. Trips to the left. And it is a handoff up the middle for Waynesburg. Tom Pallone gets ahead for the first down to the 29-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. Nate Moot there on the stop. Waynesburg able to move the chains. Very rarely have we seen the Jackets hand the ball off. It's been that short intermediate passing game. We saw them go deep once to Thompson down the sideline on a, on a blown route, blown coverage by the Titans defense. But it's been a mixture of, of screens and, and short passes for Carter, Carter Hill today. Only two rushing plays so far. And this first quarter just about over, down to six seconds to go in the quarter. Waynesburg wants to run one more play. And they will literally run it. Pallone with some space across the 40 to the 45, tackled at the 47-yard line of Waynesburg. Is Josh Beistel with the tackle for Westminster. And that is how the first quarter will come to an end. Is uh, when the team switch sides, they won't have far to go on the other side of the field. 47-yard line of Waynesburg. Yellow Jackets up 14 to nothing. After one quarter of play, we'll be back on the PAC Sports Network. Disability affects the lives of over 29,000 people in Fayette, Washington, and Greene counties. Tri-County Patriots for Independent Living are people with and without disabilities working to meet those needs in the community. The success of Triple comes from the commitment of a dedicated board of directors, its members, and volunteers. To continue to improve services, Triple is renovating the historical YWCA building located at 42 West Maiden Street in Washington. This will allow for an assistive internet cafe, increased veteran services, and transportation and wellness to provide skills to help with independent living. Your help and feedback are appreciated. And if you seek assistance, we're here to help. Welcome back to Westminster. The Titans trailing Waynesburg 14 to nothing. Yellow Jackets with two touchdown passes from Carter Hill. One to tight end Mike Ferrero and another to tight end Zach Kappen. And Waynesburg with the football at their own 47-yard line. Westminster's offense, they've moved it, but they've also coughed it up twice and throwing one interception. Dak Britt, so three total turnovers for Westminster. First and 10, Yellow Jackets. And an out pattern toward Bernie Thompson. Ball over, throw it incomplete. Is Beistel in coverage, the safety for the Titans. Checking out some other scores in the PAC. Geneva up 7-0 on Grove City. Second quarter. Also second quarter, Thomas Moore up 17-0 on St. Vincent. And kind of a surprise so far today. Teal up 7-0 in the second quarter against Bethany. Bison played a tough game. Talked about their loss to these Titans last week. Second and 10, Waynesburg at their own 47. Fake the handoff to Pallone. It's a screen pass to Lavelle. And he is banged down. Combo tackle made at the 50-yard line. Joe Glennon, a part of that stop for Westminster. Glennon, 5'11", 173 pound sophomore from Westmont Hilltop High School. Hails from Johnstown, PA. Third down and seven for Waynesburg at the midfield strike. Early in the second quarter. Waynesburg tops in the conference in third down conversion rate at a 44% clip. Face with a third and seven, deep ball. Incomplete far sideline, looking for Lavelle. He wants a flag, no flag thrown. And Waynesburg faced with their first fourth down of the day. And they'll bring the punting unit on and kick it away. A 14-0 lead. The way their defense is playing, this is the right call here. I mentioned Westminster has moved the football. They have 80 yards of total offense, but the turnovers have really been a hamstring issue for the Titans to this point. In the punt for Waynesburg. Go ahead, uh, Justin. I was just going to say that their uh, their drives have definitely looked like they had some kind of potential and just unfortunately for them ended in a, in a turnover each time, but each time it was in Waynesburg territory. Dominic Zappa punting and a line drive punt. Hits at the 20, touches a Waynesburg player. Westminster will scatter. 
And Waynesburg touches it down at the 17-yard line. Last touch by Ryan Haar. A reserve safety for the Yellow Jackets on the special team's punt. And actually the ball will officially be placed at the 19 where it was first touched by the Yellow Jackets. So Westminster, it'll be their fourth offensive possession of the game with uh, one minute into the second quarter. 14-0 Waynesburg the score. But as we were talking about Westminster, those drives that they, that they had prior to the turnovers, they had the, the look as if points might be uh, produced. But uh, the turnovers have prevented that. And Britt finding good rushing room. So far, Britt has rushed for 44 yards today, and he's going to try for more as he bounces it to the outside left, has some space across the 30, 35 out of bounds at the 38-yard line of Westminster. Nice block on the perimeter by Colin Wallace, too, shoving a Waynesburg defensive back out of the way. Biggest play of the day, I think, for, for Dak Britt with his legs. Gain of 20 on the run to the 39 officially, and that is his longest run of the day. Previous long was 13. So Dak Britt doing well. Britt in the shotgun. Say that quite a bit for both teams, whether it's Britt or Carter Hill. Tries to bounce it outside, short side of the field left, but Waynesburg able to string that one out. Is staying with it, JT Thompson defensively for the Yellow Jackets. Thomas out there trying to block Thompson. Thompson able to get around him and great job by Thomas. He was in a position there where he could grab Thompson and it would have probably triggered a holding penalty with the official there. So good hands off play by him. It was a loss, but it could have been much worse if uh, he'd have been flagged on that. Loss of three to the 36. Sun is out, really for the first time today. Yeah, we had rain prior to kickoff. It didn't look too promising. A little bit of drizzle, but sun shining right now. Second down and 13. Pass complete. Colin Wallace he is upended at the 44 yard line. Samson out there. Got him off his feet. Down to 12 41 and counting in the second quarter. Well, while things haven't gone Westminster's way offensively, in terms of those turnovers that we have spoken of, uh, the fact that they've been able to move the ball, score at two touchdowns right now, defense coming up with a big stop on the preceding possession by Waynesburg, you can punch it in the end zone here. You're right back in, in it right now if you're the Titans. Oh, yeah, definitely. But a third down and five and a timeout called by Coach Jeff Hand of the Westminster Titans. So 12-14 with the stopped clock in the second quarter. 14-0 Waynesburg leading. We'll take a quick break on the PAC Sports Network. Bankruptcy myths busted. I heard you lose everything you own when you file bankruptcy. The whole point of bankruptcy is to get a fresh start. And that's only possible if you have something to start with. In over 95% of bankruptcy cases, individuals keep everything they own, including their home, car, pension, and household goods. Myth. Busted. Bankruptcy Myths Busted. Brought to you by Foster Law Offices. Call today to schedule a free consultation and sleep better tonight. Back at Westminster, the Titans face with a third and five from their own 44-yard line. And uh, so far today, Westminster four of five on third down conversions. Uh, which is uh, another one of those positive numbers that we're talking of uh, for Westminster. Well, the turnover is a, a big negative for Westminster to this point. They move the ball and doing well on third downs. They have another third down attempt here. Third and five. Dak Britt takes the low snap, looks to the right, pass complete, and leaping a hurdle at the 45-yard line out of bounds by David Wright at the 44-yard line of Waynesburg. So yet again, Westminster converts on third down. Yeah, Right with the big leap out of bounds. It's weird to see a team five of six on third down with no points on the scoreboard. That's what we have right here. And this is part of what Jeff Hand wanted to see in terms of consistency from his offense. He has that part of the consistency. Again, the, the big negative, the turnovers. And Westminster marching the football right now in Waynesburg territory at the 44. Handoff Tyler Banks off of right guard. Trying to find a crease, gets to the 41-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. Pick up of three on first down. Tyler Banks from Meadville High School. 
5'10", 190-pound senior. Led Westminster in rushing last year with 651 yards and six touchdowns. Approaching the 400-yard mark this season. Averages three yards per carry. Runs of yardage has come grudgingly at times for Tyler Banks. Second down and seven. And a sweep carry for Bonnets. Finds the corner left. Tracked down from behind by safety Brian Gary. The good pickup for Westminster to the Waynesburg 34. Nick Fiorentino down there with a the kick out block along the outside. Westminster Lions had a, a couple of nice athletic plays, a couple of nice blocks so far. Seven yard pickup for Bonnets. That's good for a first down. And Titans not getting away from what's been successful, doing a better job of ball security also. First down for Westminster. Dak Britt from the shotgun, option play. Going right to Tyler Banks, takes a hard hit but bounces off of that at the 33 and gets forward to the 31. Waynesburg able to string out that option for a minimal gain. Played that well, kept Banks from getting to the outside in open field. Danny Morgan for Waynesburg. In on the stop. Junior from Albert Gallatin High School. Second down and seven. Ten minute mark of the second quarter. Britt fakes the handoff. Will keep it up the middle. Has space across the 20. And inside the 20 to the 18 of Waynesburg. Dak Britt has had some impressive runs today. That yet another. Not until he has a first down. Now that read option and Dak Britt doing a very nice job of, you mentioned the ball security and, and, and takes his time with that, but then once he's able to execute the fake to Tyler Banks, uh, he runs out of the backfield like he's shot out of a gun. He also does a good job of not taking a direct hit. There he got plowed over by Brian Gary, but he's not really taking a, a ton of hits and able to scamper out of bounds or deflect some of these would-be tacklers. First to 10 at the 18, scrambling left, flag thrown, ball Tossed out of bounds, but this flag thrown in the area of holding. And it will be a holding penalty on the Westminster Titans. Trying to escape to the left. His offensive lineman for Dak Britt trying to protect him, but got a little bit of cloth there. I'd rather see a, a holding penalty than to see my quarterback get plowed over. So not necessarily a, what you want in a penalty, but a good penalty in that situation. And also, you do get to replay the down instead of uh, instead of having a sack and a, and a second and 20 instead of a, a first and 20 or what they're faced with here. Live to fight another down. First down and long, first and 20 for Westminster. Man in motion right to left, and it's a handoff to Banks up the middle. He will scoot to the 25 tackle made by Fedorka. He talked early on, Justin, about Fedorka and Brian Gary being two of the uh, players in particular from Waynesburg that you don't want to be hit by because they can bring a wallop. A Fedorka, first team all PAC member from a year ago. ECAC South All Star as well. Last year led Waynesburg with nine and a half sacks and 14 tackles for a loss. Yeah, very stout defense, very aggressive defense, and Fedorka in that defensive line knows it's a passing situation. They can pin their ear backs and come, come at you. Second and 17, pass through the hands of Colin Wallace and intercepted from behind by Waynesburg. Fourth turnover by the Waynesburg defense. And it's Sampson with his second interception of the game. Marvin Sampson tackled at the 17-yard line of Waynesburg. Fourth possession, fourth turnover by the Westminster offense. And not sure what happened there. It looked like it's just a little out route to Wallace. Not sure if he's stuck in the turf or if the ball just went through his hands. Either way, it's Waynesburg football and Jacket defense gotta be loving this effort so far. So is the Jacket offense. Ball back in their hands. Handoff Forsyth up the middle to the 20 yard line. Forsyth, a lot of excitement surrounding him as a transfer from Cal U. Cal U, a very good Division II program in the PSAC. So anytime 
you can acquire a player of that level. And uh, by way of the transfer, Waynesburg uh, excited about him. And uh, so far this season, 195 yards, four touchdowns entering today's action. As much as Waynesburg passes the football, um, no running back really in this offense is going to be a focal point. But you love to have that talent, whether it be Forsyth, Tom Pallone, Jerry Lahman, the leading rusher for Waynesburg, whomever. Pallone gets the carry this time, bounces it out right side, slips a tackle in the backfield at the 25-30, and bounced out of bounds at the 33. That's good for a first down. And welcoming contact, too, along the sidelines. He didn't just tiptoe out of bounds. He took a shot from one of the Titans along that near sideline. So Pallone from Jeanette High School, Jeanette Jayhawk, a 13-yard gain. Excuse me, a 10-yard gain to the 30-yard line. This is the fourth offensive possession of the day for the Yellow Jackets. 7-35 and rolling in the second quarter. Waynesburg up by a pair of touchdowns. Carter Hill has thrown two touchdowns, and he'll throw one to Bernie Thompson, complete far sideline. And another first down for Waynesburg. Bernie Thompson able to move the sticks yet again. The Yellow Jackets are starting to balance out the attack. A little bit, running for a first down and passing for a first down on the last two plays. As this Titan defense reeling a little bit. Thompson up to 70 yards receiving today. His fourth catch sets up a first and 10 from the 42 of Waynesburg. Waynesburg in the white uniforms moving left to right across your computer screen. Hand off goes up the middle to Tom Pallone. Follows some good lead blocking to the 45, 46 of the Yellow Jackets. Corey Neal with the stop on that one for Westminster. Inside linebacker. Center Tyler Powell up leading the surge. The 6'3", 300-pound sophomore. Also Rob Kinjerski in that area. First team all PAC lineman for the Yellow Jackets. Second down and six. A nice job climbing the ladder for the catch. Andrew English. Near the lead marker at the 48 of Westminster, he has a first down, and so do the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, pulled that ball essentially back from being thrown away. And it's nice when you have a receiver that can go up like English did, catch that ball at its highest point, bring it down. Not a whole lot of defense, or a whole, a lot of whole, way, whole lot of ways to defend that ball. I'm in awe of that play. It's difficult <laughs> to get the sentence out. Oh, Andrew English, fantastic catch. First and 10, Waynesburg from the Westminster 48. Pallone dives ahead to the 44 of Waynesburg. Here's me of Westminster, rather. Neil and Schrock on the stop. It's Waynesburg running attack. Starting to make the Titans linebackers become a little more active. Turning into uh, to a more balanced attack here in the second quarter. It's, it has kept Westminster on their heels. Second and six. Carter Hill in the pocket, scrambles right. Flag thrown downfield. Hill will run out of bounds around the 40-yard line, and this may be defensive holding on Westminster. I think you're right. We saw a couple bodies get tangled up, and there was a Waynesburg receiver on the ground. Wait to see what the officials sort out here, but that was kind of my first thought as well. Oh. Flag has been waved off. And just feet tangled up. So give Hill the scramble to the 40, to the 40 and a half yard line, right in between the 40 and 41. Some late additions onto the field here for Waynesburg. Carter Hill will hustle to the far sideline to get the play call from head coach Rick Sheppis. Sheppis in his ninth year at Waynesburg, 20th coach in school history at, the, uh, at Waynesburg University. Third down and two. Carter Hill drops back off the shotgun snap. Slant pattern complete to English at the 32. First down for Waynesburg. Jared Heck on the stop. He's been kind of the, the shadow to English for much of the afternoon. I talked earlier about Carter Hill. Coach Shep has said that the reason why the offense has transformed from a mostly rushing attack to now a mostly passing attack is because of Carter Hill. Quarterback has a great understanding of the offense and 
after starting the final six games of 2012. He is the facilitator of this Waynesburg offense in 2013. First and 10 at the Westminster 32. Blitz coming. Fade pattern downfield. Incomplete flag thrown. Pass intended for Bernie Thompson. Jared Heck in coverage. I don't think this one will get picked up, but we'll see. Still waiting the official word. And indeed, pass interference on Jared Heck. And in college football, that is a 15-yard penalty. For the folks uh, more accustomed to the pro game, it's not a spot of the foul penalty, but 15 yards. Moves the football to the 17 of Westminster. 14-0 Waynesburg, 427 on a stop clock second quarter. Waynesburg driving again. Four turnovers by Westminster today. And two touchdown passes by Carter Hill. Roll out right, looking left, and a pass complete over the middle to English. Makes the catch inside the five. Good pocket that time for Carter Hill as he rolled out to the right. Forsyth, the, the running back on that play, went out to the left and, and caught the, the blind side defender, giving Hill enough time to find English over the middle. And nice job by the receiver as well, going down for that ball and catching that off the turf. So English has gone up high and now down low for receptions on this drive. First and goal from the three. Tight formation this time for the Yellow Jackets. Handoff for Scythe, and he plunges into the end zone for the touchdown. Waynesburg has ballooned their lead to 20 to nothing. It had to be some kind of hole for Forsyth to run in or run through, run into the end zone through because as soon as Hill handed that ball off, turned over his shoulder, and he was already signaling touchdown. Forsyth was about the two, maybe the three-yard line. Three-yard rushing touchdown for Jake Forsyth, his fifth rushing score of the season. Extra point by Alex Henry. Good, good snap and hold. Henry boots it through and he is rolled up on, on that extra point attempt and a flag thrown. As one of the Titans trying to block that kick, Dylan Heitmeyer, he knows a thing or two about blocking kicks, but that time rolled into Henry. And it's going to be a foul on Westminster, likely to be enforced on the kickoff. When we come back, we'll tell you all about it. But in the meantime, it's 21-0 Waynesburg, 3.59 to go in the second quarter. We'll return in a moment on the PAC Sports Network. For three generations, Sharps Furniture has been proud to serve Southwestern PA with their brand of personal service. Being an authorized dealer for Lazy Boy, they are dedicated to providing the finest quality products made here in the U.S. of A. Looking for custom upholstery? Sharps carries a large selection of upholstery to choose from, all made in America. And their friendly staff will deliver right to your front door. Sharps Furniture, your authorized Lazy Boy dealer. Family owned, family operated since 1917. Located just off I-70, exit 19B in Washington, PA. Welcome back to New Wilmington, Pennsylvania, Bury Stadium, Westminster trailing Waynesburg 21 to nothing. It was indeed a personal foul running into the kicker, or roughing the kicker penalty on Heitmeyer and the Titans. So the ball will be kicked from the 50 yard line where it is teed up. You always have to watch when the kickoff is moved up, some kind of trickeration. Well, Waynesburg's up 21 nothing, but those guys on the front line for Westminster. Better be ready just in case. Henry with the run up. And he'll boot it deep, end over end. Received by Westminster inside the five. And Allward tackled at the 13. So the penalty does cost Westminster field position. And it's Cody Allward with a second return of the day. Allward, we saw earlier, was uh, really a, a collision away from one of his own linemen. Uh, on the special team's return, one of his lead blockers from going all the way. And here, a short return of 10 yards to the 13. 3.54 to go before halftime. Waynesburg with a three touchdown lead. Four turnovers for the Westminster offense. This is their fifth possession. Dak Britt 
Swings it out left complete at the 16 yard line and ahead of the 19 is Mike Frankowski with the reception. 5'8", 225 pound sophomore from West Allegheny High School in Imperial, Pennsylvania. Those four drives for Westminster. Seven plays, eight plays, five plays, and ten plays. No points, four turnovers. Accumulating yardage has not been a problem for Westminster today. Holding on to the football has. Handoff Tyler Banks left to the 20 and wrestled out of bounds at the 24. Nice tackle made by McEnany. First and 10, Westminster after that carry by Banks. Roll out right, Dak Britt. Britt going to tuck and run. And out of bounds at the Westminster 26-yard line. Pickup of just two on that scramble. Dak Britt has been very good rushing the football from the quarterback position. And someone that uh, Rick Sheppis, uh, head coach of the Yellow Jackets, mentioned that they had to keep their eye on him. That was his 12th carry of the ball game. 76 yards so far. Britt has also thrown two picks and has fumbled once today. Accepts the low snap. Good job to pick that one off of his shoe tops. Now avoids a man in the backfield. Scrambles right and again out of bounds. But good scramble out to the 33-yard line as it was Josh Tolliver once more bringing the pressure for Waynesburg. But Britt had it right in front of him. An angle to the right for a good run. As much time as Tolliver has spent in the Westminster backfield, he's going to get a sack at some point today, but wasn't on that play. Britt, so much awareness of where the defenders are, even on that low snap, knowing where the rush was coming from and able to scramble out of there. Veteran, veteran quarterback. Westminster with their flashcards on the near sideline for the play call, third and one. In motion, Bonnets designed a run for Dak Britt. And it appears he's dropped shy of the lead stick, but a penalty flag thrown. It's thrown from the near sideline. Maybe an offsides call. Sometimes you get that call from that official. Kyle Ritchie player who made the tackle was called for the offsides and when the flag was thrown <laughs> Richie after making the tackle he kind of pumped his fist but in a, in a frustrated fashion as if he had done something wrong and well he did he was offsides he did make the tackle but he had a head start first and ten now for Westminster as a result from their own 38 quick pass right and that is complete to Safantes Levine a good five-yard pickup for Westminster on first down. He was nicked up earlier in the first quarter. Limp off the field, so good to see him back. Looks like he's moving around pretty well. Levine from Chartiers Valley High School. Sophomore with his 10th catch of the season. One thirty-four on a stop clock. Second quarter, 21 to nothing, Waynesburg. Two touchdown passes by Carter Hill. A rushing score by Jake Forsythe. Dak Britt over the middle. Lofts one complete to Banks. Banks trying to get to the sideline to stop the clock, and he does. Waynesburg 48, another first down for Westminster. Good awareness by Banks to know how much time on the situation, knowing his team only has one timeout remaining, still half a football field to go with 86 seconds on the clock before halftime. So a little dink and dunks along the way. Some scrambles by Dak Britt. But everybody getting out of bounds, which has been key for Westminster. Four wide for Dak Britt and the Titans. Banks in the backfield, side to the left, scrambling left. Dak Britt chased by Tolliver. Britt will outrace him to the sideline, and actually a loss of one on that play. Britt keeps it. But he does stop the clock, 119. Loss of one, second and well, Westminster very mindful of the sideline to stop the clock, but at some point you have to go downfield. Yeah, can't really gain a whole lot of yardage running to the sideline. They're a loss of one. They're going to have to stretch the field at some point, probably with a pass here. 
pretty soon if the uh, the drive stalls in this situation and they face a, a third and long after this second and 11. Snap to Britt. Looks over the middle, complete. As he has Bonnet, circles about. Has the first down and more, tackled to the 31-yard line. Westminster will hurry to the line. A curl out by Toby Bonnet just sat down there in the middle of the Waynesburg zone. Able to spin away from a couple defenders, get good yards after the catch. And the clock continues to roll. No huddle, hurry up. Dak Britt fumbles the football, stripped by Fedorka, but Johnny on the spot with the recovery. One of the Westminster linemen, it's Nick Fiorentino. Able to save possession for Westminster and almost another turnover. And Westminster now will utilize their final timeout of the half. One minute to go before halftime, 21-0. Waynesburg leading. We'll be right back on the PAC Sports Network. Four turnovers by Westminster today and almost a fifth. Brandon Fedorka forcing a fumble. Does get credit for the sack and strip. The fumble was recovered by lineman Nick Fiorentino, Fiorentino for Westminster. It's a second down and 18 after the eight yard loss. Westminster using their final timeout. Trips to the right, shotgun Dak Britt. One man to the left, that's Colin Wallace, the top target. Waynesburg almost jumping off sides there. Low snap handle, well by Britt. Pass out, cut complete to Wallace. Makes the catch and out of bounds at the 27 of Waynesburg. Marvin Sampson with the coverage, but Wallace able to pull that one in after having the last one go through his hands. Dak Britt is senior, Colin Wallace is senior there. You see the timing between the two players having spent four years together. And that was the low snap, as we talked about, and uh, didn't miss a beat there. Britt just looked up, and he knew when to throw that ball, and Wallace knew when to turn and make the catch. Third down and reasonable after a second and 18. It's third down and five. Clock stopped at 54 seconds. Britt, quick pass, again complete to Wallace. Slips a tackle to the 20, gets by Sampson, and then out of bounds of the 15. So not only getting the first down, but slips the tackle from Sampson and then gets out of bounds. Working that near sideline well. 15-yard line. Give Wallace to the 14. First and 10. Westminster moving the ball, as they have really all game long. But they have no points to show for it because of all the turnovers. The Waynesburg defense bend but don't break today. They have bent on this march. See if Westminster can finally punch it in the end zone. 48 seconds before halftime. Dak Britt, here comes the blitz, fade. Looking for Wallace, juggled and dropped. Wallace tangled up with Sampson. And that ball appeared to hit Wallace in the hands, couldn't hang on. Yeah, that's been the matchup all afternoon. Wallace, a size advantage over Sampson. You'd think that jump ball would, would be in Westminster's favor, but that's the second time they've tried it and it has not been completed yet. Actually, on the first time, it was down here on the other end. Sampson came away with an interception after Wallace basically misjudged the pass. Wallace at 6'2", Marvin Sampson at 5'9", so there's your height advantage you mentioned, Justin. And uh, Wallace, very productive receiver for Westminster, but he's had some passes slip through his grasp today. He's lined up wide left. Second down and 10, Britt trying to scramble out, trapped in the pocket, Tolliver has him for the sack. Well, you mentioned, Justin, it was only a matter of time, and there it was, Tolliver as he combines with one of his teammates for the sack, Zach Machuga. That backs Westminster up big time now, is down to 22 seconds on a third down and long. Dak Britt takes the snap pressure again, scrambles to the left, and just throws it out of bounds incomplete. No one in the area for Westminster. And Dak Britt just trying to survive for another play. So fourth down. With the Titans trailing 21 nothing, Ball spot the 24-yard line. You're looking at a 40-41-yard field goal in this situation. 
And kicking field goals has not been the forte for the Westminster Titans this season. Justin Dahl is two of five this year, his long 31 yards. Yeah, this looks like a one shot to the end zone here. Still 14 seconds left, so this play is not successful. Waynesburg, an opportunity with the ball, although up 21. You, offense may just sit on it. But first things first, Waynesburg will take a timeout to discuss their defense. Yeah, Waynesburg with the timeout. We'll keep it right here for the time being with only 14 seconds left on the second quarter clock. And uh, well, the story of this game has been the turnovers, no doubt about that for Westminster. Uh, you know, marching the football has not been an issue for Westminster today, but uh, the, the turnovers uh, certainly have been. Waynesburg with uh, two fumble recoveries and two interceptions, the two picks by Marvin Sampson. And uh, three of the turnovers accounted for by Dak Britt. Uh, the two interceptions, of course, also coughed the football up uh, one time in Waynesburg territory. For the Waynesburg offense, uh, they have been very happy about the short fields uh, that they have dealt with. 15-yard uh, touchdown pass from Carter Hill to Mike Ferrero and a 17-yard touchdown pass from Hill to Zach Kappen. Also a three-yard rushing score by Jake Forsythe that has Waynesburg up 21-0. Fourth down and 20. First down available at the four-yard line. So Westminster doesn't necessarily have to go to the end zone, but they do. They have no timeouts left. So you're looking to the end zone here. Dak Britt once again handles the low snap. Pass over the middle. Man comes open. It's caught. Touchdown, Westminster. Coming wide open over the middle, Cody Allward with his first touchdown catch of the year. And the 5'8 sophomore gets Westminster on the board. Just a seam route down the middle of the field. No one accounted for him. Britt able to find him wide open in the end zone. Westminster finally on the board just before halftime. Eight seconds on the clock. And now Westminster with a different alignment here before the extra point. Now they'll realign to something more traditional is Justin Dahl for the extra point attempt. He's 9 of 11 on the season in PATs. Uh, this end over end kick is no good wide right. So we mentioned that uh, place kicking has not been the forte of Westminster and that extra point attempt no good. So Westminster does get on the board though with the touchdown catch by Allward. A 24 yard touchdown reception the pass uh, from Dak Britt, that's his eighth touchdown pass of the season. And if you're Waynesburg there, that touchdown, kind of unacceptable, really. A, a fourth and 20. Uh, you know Westminster has to go to the end zone. We were talking about right before the snap that uh, the first down was available at the four-yard line, but really that was useless. You had to go end zone. Yeah, it, it'll give the coaches something to talk about at halftime. and it's Definitely something that will leave a bad taste in your mouth if you're a Jackets fan. You like the result of the first half leading... 21-6, pending the outcome of this kickoff. But you definitely, uh, definitely don't like the way that last drive ended. And on the other side of the football, if you're Westminster. Oh, well, <laughs> love that. A little bit of momentum after a four turnover half and trailing halftime only by 15. Could have been much worse. And uh, you know, something definitely the offense has been building towards all afternoon, finally being able to punch it into the end zone. It gives you a, a good feeling going into the uh, – Going into the halftime break, you were able to salvage something out of a, a pretty much disastrous first half in terms of turnovers. Kickoff man Jake Schnellbach boots it to the 12-yard line where Waynesburg on the return across the 30. And tackled near the 33. That is Willie Lavelle on the return. To the 34-yard line. Two seconds on the clock. I think Waynesburg will just sit on this and head to the locker room. They love to pass it, but... Even though, uh, if you're Rick Sheppis, likely not all that excited about that last touchdown score by Westminster, but overall you have to be content with the lead that you have acquired to this point. And the Yellow Jackets bunched in tight, and the kneel down by Carter Hill, and that'll do it for the first half. So Waynesburg with a 21-6 lead over the Westminster Titans. We'll pause for a break. We'll come back for some quick halftime notes and then go to our halftime standby. We'll be right back on the PAC Sports Network. When you are in need of fast, affordable, and professional voiceovers, contact Time Ad Productions. Time Ad Productions offers voice services for business presentations, documentary narrations, radio, television, imaging, and commercials, movie trailers, corporate phone systems, websites, audiobooks, and more. 
visit or contact us online at www.timeadproductions.com. Welcome back to Curry Stadium in New Wilmington, PA. The Waynesburg Yellow Jackets up on the Westminster Titans 21 to 6 as we are now at intermission. Uh, Carter Hill, two touchdown passes, one to Mike Ferrero, another to Zach Cap, and the two tight ends for the Yellow Jackets with touchdowns. Jake Forsyth, a three yard rushing score. And uh, for Westminster, a touchdown with eight seconds to go before halftime, a 24 yard touchdown pass from Dak Britt to Cody Allward and uh, really salvaged what was a very tough first half for Westminster. Four turnovers, two interceptions by Britt and uh, Waynesburg uh, took advantage of those turnovers and produced points. But uh, but all in all, as we talked about at the end, uh, right before halftime there, uh, Westminster, after what was a pretty woeful first half, uh, they have to feel at least decent about where they're at right now in this game. And salvaged the first half, salvaged that last drive too. It stalled. It was fourth and 20. They were facing fourth and 20. They were also up against it with the clock uh, just before halftime, but able to convert that pass down the middle of the field. Just a, just a seam route that was unaccounted for by the Waynesburg secondary. And uh, that was the best drive of the afternoon. Westminster, they've been they've been building towards, marched at 87 yards and 15 plays. And that's kind of a, a statement drive to get them back into this game and hopefully build a little momentum towards that second half. And if you're Waynesburg, aside from that last touchdown, really their only blemish to this point is they have uh, been very strong. The defense uh, coming up with turnovers, almost the fifth turnover as well on that uh, touchdown drive, what ended up being the touchdown drive by Westminster. But uh, the Waynesburg defense, uh, Ben, but don't break as we have seen today uh, with the four turnovers and the offense has been productive as usual. So uh, if you're Waynesburg, you have to feel good about where you're at as well. Again, that only blemish, that last touchdown by Cody Allward. So uh, we'll break down the statistics uh, more in depth when we come back, but uh, we will take one more quick timeout and then go to our standby graphic as the score here at the half, 21 to six Waynesburg. We'll come back in about 15 minutes on the PAC Sports Network. Disability affects the lives of over 29,000 people in Fayette, Washington, and Greene counties. Tri-County Patriots for Independent Living are people with and without disabilities working to meet those needs in the community. The success of Triple comes from the commitment of a dedicated board of directors, its members, and volunteers. To continue to improve services, Triple is renovating the historical YWCA building located at 42 West Maiden Street in Washington. This will allow for an assistive internet cafe, increased veteran services, and transportation and wellness to provide skills to help with independent living. Your help and feedback are appreciated, and if you seek assistance, we're here to help.
Welcome back to Bury Stadium in Westminster. The Westminster Titans trailing the Waynesburg Yellow Jackets 21-6. to Our score at halftime. Both teams on the field warming up. The uh, Westminster Titans uh, circled up and the Waynesburg Yellow Jackets on their way out to do some stretching. But uh, you look at this game, total yardage, Justin, uh, pretty even. 230 yards for Waynesburg, 228 yards for Westminster. Uh, the teams obviously utilize a different uh, style of attack uh, for the most part, but uh, the total yards are the same. The turnovers are not. Uh, two interceptions for Dak Britt. He also has one fumble lost as well as Toby Bonnets with a fumble loss. So four total turnovers for Westminster, almost a fifth. And uh, Waynesburg's defense has been able to, uh, as we've called it, uh, the bend and don't break defense to this point, and uh, their offense has converted those opportunities into, into points, and that's really the primary reason of uh, where our score is at right now, 21-6 Waynesburg. Well, neither team really being able to get off, get the other off the field on third down, that's kind of a, a, a eye-popping statistic as well. Waynesburg 4-5 of five on third down, and Westminster 6-8 of eight on third down, but they also converted a fourth down, so make that seven of eight on third down. Like you said, the story of the first half basically was the turnovers and Waynesburg being able to cash in early, balloon this lead up to 21, and then Westminster took advantage of a breakdown in Waynesburg's secondary to convert that fourth and 20 into a, a touchdown right before the halftime break. Uh, looking at some of the individual stats, uh, Dak Britt's been basically the entire Westminster attack today with uh, rushing with his legs, 64 yards, but a lot of that was going backwards in that on that last drive. He was up and over 70, 75 yards earlier in that drive before taking a couple losses and then through the air, 128 yards. So he's been the, the main Westminster cog today in their attack. Yeah, most certainly has. And uh, for the Yellow Jackets, Carter Hill, 14 of 18, 170 yards, two touchdowns. And uh, he really came out of the gate with uh, just about those same statistics uh, added on slightly to that. But... Uh, uh, Westminster has uh, held on to the football quite a bit. Uh, time of possession, 18 minutes and 42 seconds for Westminster, 11-18 for Waynesburg. So uh, Hill just hasn't had the football in his hands all that much. But Waynesburg will have the football to start this second half. Yeah, Hill started out 8-10, of 10, so converting 8 of his first 10 passes with two touchdowns. and Dropped off a little bit, but he really hasn't had to be on. Waynesburg went to a more rushing style of attack, started to wind some clock. Worked that lead a little bit once they had opened it up to a, a multiple touchdown lead. So second half, moments away from getting underway here from Bury Stadium. So glad you can be with us today on the PAC Sports Network. I'm Randy Gore along with Justin Piles, our producer, Kat Guyon, and Caitlin Edwards, our camera person today. And uh, next up uh, for us on the network, the next football broadcast, uh, two weeks from now, Grove City at Teal as uh, we'll round out our football schedule and uh, also keep your eye on our broadcast schedule as uh, very likely uh, another PAC volleyball match uh, will be ahead and it uh, might be a big one. So uh, we'll just tell you to stay tuned for that. Keep, uh, keep aware of our broadcast schedule. Kickoff will underway for the second half on the return. Willie Lavelle starts left and now finds wide open space up the middle across midfield and is angled toward the near sideline. Out of bounds, Willie Lavelle with a brilliant return there. Yeah, Schnellbach was the only one between Lavelle and the end zone. The Westminster kicker, a good job of angling Lavelle towards the sidelines, able to force him out of bounds and prevent that kickoff return to start the second half. So as Waynesburg has had quite a bit at times, the short field, and it's not a turnover that produces the short field this time around, but instead, a kickoff return by Willie Lavelle to the 36 of Westminster. So Carter Hill, who has twice this season won the PAC Offensive Player of the Week award, stands in the shotgun, a flag thrown. Early in the third quarter. And a legal procedure, false start. Backs Waynesburg up five yards, first and 15 from the Westminster 41. Waynesburg with three wide, twins to the left. Sidecar to the left of Hill is Tom Pallone. Shotgun. And pass intercepted. Going the other direction, it's Westminster up the near sideline. First turnover by the Waynesburg Yellow Jackets offense today. 
And the interception made for Westminster. Big time pick by Dylan Heitmeyer, the man who blocked the punt last week leading to the Westminster victory. He might have uh, just given Westminster a big shot in the arm again here this week. Absolutely. Hill just a three-step drop, trying to get that pass out on what looked to be a slant route along the outside. Heitmeyer just jumped the route, and he was headed the other direction. Huge momentum swing out of the gate here in the second half. Last week, Heitmeyer, with 44 seconds left, blocked a punt, recovered it in the end zone for a touchdown to lift Westminster to a 7-6 win over Bethany. Here's an option play right, ball on the turf. Fedorka trying to pick it up, ball still loose. At the 41-yard line and a pileup, Waynesburg says they have it, and so do the officials. Recovery made by Fedorka. He tried to scoop and score, then as he was bobbling it about, decided to just fall on the football. He did, so just after uh, seemingly a shot in the arm for Westminster on the interception by Heitmeyer, the pitch going right. They give the ball away to Waynesburg, their fifth turnover of the day. Boy, peaks and valleys. We just had three peaks, and, or, or two peaks and, and, and one valley if you're the Waynesburg side, the, the big kickoff return, then the interception that Hill threw, and now back in business with the football. My goodness, up and down swings to start this second half. First to 10, Hill with the handoff, Pallone, left side, finds the corner, dives ahead to the 47-yard line of Waynesburg. The interception by Carter Hill that he threw to Heitmeyer, just his second interception of the season, so he's been very efficient. And very productive, 23 touchdowns entering today. He has two more this afternoon. So 25 on the season to just two interceptions. You'll take that uh, from any quarterback, no matter what coach you are and what style of offense you have. And definitely the one that he'd like to have back, interception where he just you know, basically didn't even see the defender before he released the ball. Handoff Pallone. Back-to-back -back gives to Pallone. Finds the yards grudgingly this time on the carry. Fights forward to the 49, so pickup of two on that run. Sets up a third and two. That's kind of a big play here. Waynesburg about to cross midfield. Third and two. The Titans, D needs to make a stand, and this would be a, a, a good spot here to get the ball back real quick after that turnover. After the interception, Waynesburg a little more conservative after the Turnover, and a handoff Pallone, nowhere to go. Takes a big stick at the 48-yard line. And Justin Shaw with the hit, the six-foot, 195-pound sophomore from Central Valley High School. And Waynesburg with a three and out. They'll punt it to Westminster. Dominic Zappa, excuse me, Dominic Zappa, rather, the punter for Waynesburg, who averages 32.8 yards per punt. Puts the boot to it. And Westminster, oh, slipping a tackle. Safantes Levine in tight quarters and now escapes across the 40, 45, has a lead block, 40, far sideline. He's going to go all the way. Safantes Levine with a punt return for a touchdown. And Westminster cuts the deficit to 21 to 12. Holy Lavelle down here at the other end had a shot at him. Where he caught the ball and he was able to slip out of that tackle, found a seal along the outside, and he was gone. An 84-yard punt return for a touchdown. I'll tell you what, when he was reeling that ball in, I thought, that's dangerous. Yeah, but I he, thought he should have just caught a fair catch, but what do we know? He's able to not only haul that punt in, but escape two, three special teamers from Waynesburg. And then all the way down the far sideline he goes. Well, there's a shot in the arm for Westminster. And the extra point is up, and this time it is good. So extra point tacked on by Justin Dahl, and Westminster has made it a ball game down by one score. It's 21-13, Waynesburg with 12-23 on the clock, third quarter. We'll be back on the PAC Sports Network. 
We're here at Sport Clips, the new Just for Guys haircutting place to see what the buzz is about. How was it? Nice cut, nice price, professional stylist. Doesn't get any better than this. There's sports on TV at every chair. I got an awesome haircut, steam towel treatment, neck and shoulder massage. I went all the way! What are you waiting for? Sport Clips is now in your neighborhood. At Sport Clips, guys win. With two locations in Washington County, at the McMurray Shops in Peters Township and at Trinity Point in Washington. Officially 86-yard punt return by Terrence LaFontes Levine, a sophomore from Chartiers Valley with a dazzling escape to start that return. And then once he was in the open field, it was a matter of just picking up some blocks that he had them. And Westminster down now just 21 to 13. First two and a half minutes of this second half have seen more momentum swings than you normally see in an entire game. Westminster special teams, be aware of Willie Lavelle back there. Sprung a big return to start this half. Kickoff, return by Lavelle. And now he has space up the far sideline. Tackled shy of the midfield stripe. How about the returns? Lavelle, two good returns, and of course the punt that happened just moments ago. Might be even better than the yard line he returned it to. There is a flag down along the far sidelines. Not sure what happened, but we'll get that sorted out. Personal foul. Called on Westminster, and that charged on Sean Provenza, the man charged with that uh, personal foul penalty. So Waynesburg had another 15 to that. They'll have it at the Westminster 35. If you're just joining us, Waynesburg's defense has forced five turnovers today. But Westminster, tip of the cap to them, they have been scrappy. They trail it by just one score, 21-13. But Waynesburg again with good field position. Carter Hill hands it off. To Pallone, sifts through the defense and finds some space up the middle. Flag thrown from behind the play. And that is a holding penalty on Waynesburg. Referee showing off nice arm, too. He threw that flag about 15 yards on a line. Yeah, very much so. Would have been about a five yard gain on first down. Instead, a holding penalty. From the spot of the foul, if it's from the spot of the flag, it'll back Waynesburg up to the Westminster 41, but we'll wait to see. So as you said, more twists and turns in the first two minutes and 50 seconds of this second half than I'm sure both teams would care to deal with, but <laughs> Westminster, uh, they, they are accepting of it as they have benefited and have cut the deficit. Shotgun Carter Hill. Looks left, pressure comes from the outside. He'll duck under and just dive ahead for a couple of yards. Actually just one yard to the 40. Smothered under by Christofferson that time. Blitz came from the right defensive end. A few different was, Titans in the area that time. It was Heitmeyer who brought the pressure that forced, as you said, uh, Carter Hill to dive forward for a yard. Second and 14. Four wide, two to each side. Running back is Pallone. And he'll accept a swing pass. And Pallone with a lead block in front of him. Ahead to the 25-23 yard line of Westminster. Tyler Powell leading the way. Nate Mood able to get him off his feet. Dave Bisacco finished him off, but not before Waynesburg first down. And the Jackets, after being backed up on that holding penalty, able to move the chains and reestablish some momentum offensively. 11.07 to go in the third quarter. Pass complete to Thompson at the 16-yard line. Ball jarred loose, but he's out of bounds with it at the 14 of Westminster. Trying to stretch that first down mark. He'll come up about a yard short. We'll give Waynesburg pretty much the entire playbook here to work with. Second and one. They may take a shot at the end zone here from the 14-yard line. Three wide, two to the right. In the right slot is Willie Lavelle. 
And it's a delay handoff to Pallone. Minimal yardage as he is dropped for no gain. Westminster's Corey Neal, a part of that tackle, had the wrap down low, along with Tyler Heinrich out of Brookville, PA. Brookville, just north of Punxsutawney. Brookville High School, 6'4", 218-pound senior. Third down and one now for Waynesburg at the Westminster 14. After a no gain by Pallone on second down. Carter Hill, passing complete. A little bit behind the intended target, English, but uh, off his right hand and incomplete. Uh, English was tied up there with a defender for Westminster. Only could get his right hand loose, so it appeared he wanted a flag. Doesn't get one. Yeah, Joe Glennon was bumping him pretty good even at the, the start of that route, kind of mess up the timing a little bit. That's what you have to do with Waynesburg, their short passing attack. You have to get in the receiver's face. You have to bump them off their route a little bit and prevent those short passes, those screen passes that were so successful for the Yellow Jackets in the first half. In for the field goal, it's Alex Henry. He's 8 of 12 on field goal attempts this season, a long of 43. Second team all PAC selection, Alex Henry. With 9.51 on the clock, the field goal, a 31-yarder is up. Plenty of leg, and it is good. So Waynesburg expands their league to two scores now. It's a 24-13 advantage for the Waynesburg Yellow Jackets. Again, 9.46 now to go in the third quarter. 24-13, Waynesburg will be back on the PAC Sports Network. When you're seriously in debt, you know that feeling. It returns every time the phone rings. Things are out of control. A job you were counting on didn't come through or you got sick. No matter how it got to this point, your creditors don't care or understand, but I do. It's not too late. I can help. If you're embarrassed, overwhelmed, or frustrated, don't be. I'm not here to judge. I'm here to help, and you do need help. Please call me. There is a way out, and I'll get you there. Back at Bury Stadium in New Wilmington, Waynesburg expands their lead 24-13. 31-yard field goal by Alex Henry for Waynesburg. Is added on, and the football blows off the tee, so they'll reset. Third quarter brought to you by Triple Tri-County Patriots for Independent Living. Located in Washington and uh, Green and Fayette counties. Waynesburg, of course, in Green County. And over end kick by Henry, received at the 11 yard line. And Allward is swarmed under by the Yellow Jackets at the 27 yard line area. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors along with Triple, Tri-County Patriots for Independent Living, Sport Clips, Foster's Law Firm in the Mercer County area, up here in Westminster's neck of the woods, Sharps Furniture in Washington and First Commonwealth Bank, also Time Ad Productions. First and 10 Westminster at their own 29-yard line. Dak Britt fakes the handoff, runs right. With some space angled out of bounds. It appears he is near the lead stick and he gets beyond it to the 40 yard line. 11 yard pickup, 12 yard pickup for Dak Britt to the 40 yard line. Yeah, the stick down there, the clip down there, they weren't necessarily in the right spot, but he was able to get past both of those for a first down out to the 40 yard line. And Dak Britt running the football, 64 rushing yards today before that one and add on another 12 so 76 for Dak Britt. 9.15 to go in the third quarter pass two Titans in the area going for the footballs tipped into the air and nearly picked by Waynesburg but it ultimately drops harmlessly to the turf. Bonnets was one of those uh, for Westminster colliding with teammate Mike Frankowski and uh, you don't often see two receivers right on top of each other like that. Somebody ran the wrong pattern. Yeah, someone either ran the wrong route or that play needed to develop a lot more because that was uh, 
that could have been disastrous for the Westminster offense. Already faced a, a handful of turnovers today, trying to get back into this game. And uh, last thing you need right now is to turn the ball over yet again. Second and 10 from their own 40, Westminster handoff, Tyler Banks brought down to the backfield. John Sikora, 5'9", 210 pound junior. With the stop loss of yardage penalty flags come out after the play. Sakura, a member of the 2012 Capital One Academic, Academic All-District team, so he's not just a good football player, but does well in the classroom. Third down and 13 will become a third and longer personal foul after the play. And again, that was after the tackle made by Sakura. That'll be third and 28 if it was third and 13 prior to that penalty. So a ways to go here for the Titans. 8.49 on a stop clock, second quarter, 24-13, Waynesburg in front. Again, our third quarter brought to you by Tri-County Patriots for Independent Living. Triple, as they're known. One of our proud sponsors, glad to have them on for our fall sports schedule. Swing pass left to Tyler Banks. Has some lead blocks, takes a stick at the 31 yard line and is spun down an additional yard to the 32. Ronnie Skinner in the area of that stop for Waynesburg. JT Thompson also taking him off his feet. Which is a safe play call from Westminster. Don't do anything too crazy. Just pick up a few yards, play the field position game for right now, and punt it away. Gain of 10 on that swing pass to Banks. Puts him over 100 yards receiving on the season. And a punt blocked. And Waynesburg scoops it up, and they're going to run it into the end zone. Touchdown, Waynesburg Yellow Jackets. That punt blocked by Tom Pallone and run into the end zone by Anthony Bruno. Now the kicking game always so important and last week it was Westminster who blocked a punt and recovered for a touchdown. This time Waynesburg turns the tables. Pallone with the block and Bruno with the return and score. Yeah, Pallone came in untouched that time. Almost took that football right off the toe. Able to block it, and then it was just a matter of corralling it and running it into the end zone for the Jackets. 7.47 on the clock. Waynesburg opening things up with the special teams. 30 to 13. And now it is 31 to 13 with the extra point by Alex Henry. Waynesburg blowing things open here in the third quarter with the special teams. We'll take a break on the PAC Sports Network. 13. For three generations, Sharps Furniture has been proud to serve Southwestern PA with their brand of personal service. Being an authorized dealer for Lazy Boy, they are dedicated to providing the finest quality products made here in the U.S. of A. Looking for custom upholstery? Sharps carries a large selection of upholstery to choose from, all made in America. And their friendly staff will deliver right to your front door. Sharps Furniture, your authorized Lazy Boy dealer. Family owned, family operated since 1917. Located just off I-70, exit 19B in Washington, PA. Block punt by Tom Pallone, returned for a touchdown by Anthony Bruno in Waynesburg with a 31-13 lead now over Westminster. Punter Jake Schnellbach never had a chance. Waynesburg to kick it away. Alex Henry has it teed up at the 35 and will march things out, get his angle right, and the run up by Henry. End over end kick, received by Safante Slavine at his own 15 yard line. Looking for the seam up the middle, and he gets free, kicker to beat, and he just trips him up at midfield. Great job by Henry because he saves a touchdown. I already took a punt back today, and if Alex Henry doesn't stick his arm out, kind of a Ben Roethlisberger kind of tackle against the Indianapolis Colts a few years ago. That kind of just arm bar tripped him up at midfield. Now, Safonte Slavine was nicked up in the first half. He comes off the field limping just a bit, but he does have one 
Punt return for a touchdown already today. As Justin mentioned, an 86-yard punt return early in this third quarter. We're midway through now, 7.37 to go in the quarter. 31-13, Waynesburg leading. And uh, he was just the, the kicker away from a touchdown. His teammates might razz him a little bit about the fact that the kicker got him. But Alex Henry, fantastic tackle there for Waynesburg. Saves a touchdown. Dak Britt first to 10 from midfield. Scrambles to the left. And out of bounds around the 45 of Waynesburg. Now the special teams making an impact in this third quarter for both teams. Punt return for a score by Safante Slavine. Field goal by Waynesburg. Block punt in return for a touchdown by Waynesburg. Dak Britt with a quick screen to Tyler Banks. Takes a hard hit by Sakura at the 42-yard line. Sets up a third down and short. Four-yard pickup, third and one for Westminster. Frankowski checks back in. The fullback for Westminster is checking out Cody Allward. Allward with the only offensive touchdown for Westminster today. A 24-yard receiving scored with eight seconds to go before halftime. Waynesburg's defense has forced five turnovers today. Six twenty-eight and rolling. Hand up Banks. Finds a seam, has the first down, slides down at the 36 of Waynesburg. The first down for the Titans. Well, Westminster at halftime, uh, total yardage, the only difference of uh, two yards, uh, 230 for Waynesburg, 228 for Westminster, but the big difference was the uh, amount of turnovers committed by Westminster. They added another turnover early in the third quarter on an on a option play, fumbled pitch to Tyler Banks that was recovered by Brandon Fedorka. Designed run for Dak Britt right side Stacked up at the 34 and then pile driven backwards by Brian Gary. Total yardage, still not that much of a discrepancy. Just 15 yards prior to that play. Waynesburg 269, Westminster 254, but turnover mark. Westminster with five, Waynesburg with one, and that's been kind of the difference along with the special teams play. Now, Rick Sheppis, when we spoke with him earlier, he mentioned that uh, getting some plays in the kicking game would be big. And they've gotten a couple. Second down and eight from the 34. Pass batted down by Fedorka. He gets the big paw up and swats it down to the ground. Brett trying to hit right on a simple little out route. Fedorka, read the quarterback's eyes, jump up and swat that ball down. Third down and eight for Westminster. 5-16 on a stop clock third quarter. From out of town, Geneva leading Grove City 34-7 in the fourth quarter. Thomas Moore blanking St. Vincent 31-0 in the third. And Teal leading Bethany 7-6 in the third. Mm. Interesting score there. Pass left side as Banks tackled at the 31. Good open field stop by Logan McEnany. Senior from McGuffey High School. Yeah, McEnany's been very active in the secondary. He's a lean tackler for the Jackets at halftime. Eight stops in the first half. Now Bethany last week lost to Westminster 7-6. to six. They're trailing by the same score today, this time to the Teal Tomcats. PAC standings, Thomas Moore and W&J atop the conference 5-1. W&J winning the head-to-head -head meeting with Thomas Moore. So they have the tiebreaker. Dak Britt, pass over the middle, dropped by the defensive back. Brian Gary should have had the interception, hit him in between the three and three. But incomplete turnover on downs on that fourth and five play. And Waynesburg has it again, so just as well. Uh, would have been a pick, but turnover on downs nonetheless. Swainsburg at their own 31 with possession. They may end up with better fuel position as a result of that interception drop. That was beyond the first down mark. Who knows where that return would have ended up, but nonetheless, Yellow Jacket football. 
Carter Hill under center, something he doesn't do all that much, but he's under center this time. Hands it off to Forsyth, running right, lowers the shoulder, and tackled at the 39. Stop made by Joe Glennon of Westminster. I think we'll see a steady diet of him, or maybe a steady diet of the collection of Waynesburg running backs during this series. Waynesburg likes to pass, but with the lead as it sits into the second half, they want to shorten the game. So Forsyth on first down picks up eight yards. On second down and two, more to a spread offense for Carter Hill this time as Pallone is the side card to his left. Four wide, two to each side. And it's a handoff, Pallone running right. And he is upended, gets to the 40 ball, comes loose, but after he is, uh, comes in contact with the turf, so ground jars the ball loose. There is no fumble on the play, and a one-yard pickup for Pallone to the 40. Heitmeyer able to get him off the feet and cartwheel him down to the turf. PAC standings mentioned Thomas Moore and WJ both 5 and 1 WJ idle this week. Waynesburg 4 and 2. They still have hopes alive for a PAC crown or at least a share of it. They need Thomas Moore though to lose a game along the way. Waynesburg still has a contest at hand against WJ. Pass on a slant, incomplete. Intended target was English. The ball popped in the air. Willie Lavelle almost able to pull it in, but it does drop incomplete. And now fourth and one for Waynesburg. And the punting unit on. Also, rest of the standings: Geneva and Bethany at three and two, Westminster two and three, Grove City and Teal one and four, and St. Vincent zero oh and five. The Waynesburg scenario, they have to win out. Again, they do play W&J, so if they take care of their own business, the, the scenario with W&J is in their own hands. It's a fake punt on a fourth and one, and Waynesburg has the first down and more. Up ahead to the 47-yard line, Ronnie Skinner. He's usually on the opposite end of the football, but the direct snap right to him, and the fake punt, Waynesburg, with another key play on special teams, with a fake punt, they have a first down. Skinner able to pick his way, just snapped it to him at the up-back position. Just pick his way for that first down. Great design, great execution. And Waynesburg will continue the drive. 238 and counting, 31-13 Waynesburg, third quarter. Carter Hill with trips to the left. Side card to the right is Thomas Pallone. Looking left, passing left, complete. And a first down and then some out of bounds around the 40-yard line. Tim Cooper with the catch. Cooper, six-foot freshman with his second reception of the day. It is a first down. Heitmeyer part of the stop for Westminster. That completion, Hill now 17 of 24 for 210 yards and has hit seven different receivers this afternoon. Sun shining at Burry Stadium. Draw a handoff, Pallone able to squirt free to the 36-yard line of Westminster. Pickup of three. Under two minutes to go now in this third quarter. Glad you can be with us today on the PAC Sports Network. You can follow us several different locations. On Twitter, at PAC Sports. On Facebook, also, you can check out some photos on our Instagram. Second down and seven. Carter Hill rolls left off the shotgun snap, goes downfield. Catch made by English. Flag is thrown as well. And English down at the 17-yard line. Coverage by Joe Glennon. Penalty will be declined. Glennon called for pass interference. How about Andrew English? A lot of jostling between the two down there. English able to ward off the defender and come away with the football. Pass is incomplete. Oh, they called oh, I'm it. I'm sorry, incomplete. I thought they were signaling the declining of the penalty. So the pass incomplete. No catch made for English. So now we'll go to the penalty here. Let's see what we have. Pass. Pass interference on Glennon, so Waynesburg will get the yardage anyway. 
But it'll be 15 yards, not spot of the foul. 15 yards from the 36. We'll move it to the 21. A well, heck of a job by English anyway. Look from here as if he had made that catch and the ball evidently came loose uh, toward the end there. A great effort trying to ward off the defender and still getting two hands on the football in the process. Almost pulled that one off. Ball the 26 of Westminster. First and 10. And Hill fumbles the snap, picks it back up. And it is tackled by Nate Smoot. A fortunate bounce for Waynesburg. Hill dropping that football. Able to come right back up with it. Nate Moot right on top of him. As Hill just fell to the turf. My apologies, Nate Moot, not Smoot. Nate Moot on the tackle for Westminster. And Carter Hill had a little chance to get away from him. Second and 12, 36 seconds to go in the third quarter. Screen pass left, complete to English. Has a lead block across the 20, 15. Tackled from behind by Moot. Flag thrown in the area of the tackle. First down. The officials congregating to sort things out. Illegal block in the back by Waynesburg on that screen pass. So it would have been a first and goal for Waynesburg. And instead, second down, it remains at the 21 yard line. Waynesburg leading this one 31 to 13. Two touchdown passes by Carter Hill. A rushing score by Jake Forsyth. And Carter Hill going downfield. Man wide open at the two. And in the end zone for the touchdown. Coming wide open, Mike Ferrero for his second touchdown reception of the game. The senior tight end from Shaler makes it 37-13 Waynesburg. Getting down into the red zone. Westminster again unable to account for one of the tight ends for Waynesburg. Ferrero wide open in the corner, able to catch that ball right outside the goal line and then walk in. Waynesburg gaining control of this game now, 37 to 13. Extra point by Henry is good. Waynesburg now 38 to 13 with nine seconds to go in the third. We'll take a quick break on the PAC Sports Network. Moments ago, 21-yard touchdown catch by Mike Ferrero. His second touchdown reception of the season, or excuse me, of the game, gives him six now on the season. And for Carter Hill, his third touchdown pass of the afternoon gives him 26 on the year. 26 touchdowns and just two interceptions. Terrific pass ratio for that uh, young man, six-foot junior, Carter Hill, having a fantastic year. Kickoff. Returned by Allward from the 16-yard line. And taken off his feet around the 31-yard line. Now, Waynesburg, their defense has forced five turnovers today. And then in the second half, it's, the, it's been mostly the special teams. 31-yard field goal by Alex Henry. 
A punt blocked by Tom Pallone, returned 15 yards for a touchdown by Anthony Bruno. A fake punt that continued to drive that was culminated by Waynesbury on a 21-yard touchdown catch by Mike Ferrero. So special teams in the third quarter for Waynesburg. Last play of the third quarter, pass incomplete, dropped by Colin Wallace. And uh, usually the sure-handed receiver has had several drops today. Second and 10 when we come back from the 32-yard line of Westminster. Score Waynesburg 38, Westminster 13 on the PAC Sports Network. Disability affects the lives of over 29,000 people in Fayette, Washington, and Greene counties. Tri-County Patriots for Independent Living are people with and without disabilities working to meet those needs in the community. The success of Triple comes from the commitment of a dedicated board of directors, its members, and volunteers. To continue to improve services, Triple is renovating the historical YWCA building located at 42 West Maiden Street in Washington. This will allow for an assistive internet cafe, increased veteran services, and transportation and wellness to provide skills to help with independent living. Your help and feedback are appreciated. And if you seek assistance, we're here to help. Welcome back to Bury Stadium. Westminster faced with a second and ten to begin the fourth quarter. Also facing a hefty deficit, 38-13, Waynesburg leading. Westminster had cut it to 21-13 early in the third quarter on an 86-yard punt return for a touchdown by Safantes Levine as Dak Britt scrambles to the right. Has a positive yard, yardage ahead at the 32-yard line and then hit out of bounds a personal foul penalty coming up against Waynesburg. And Safante Slavine, that 86-yard punt return for a touchdown for Westminster, made it a 21-13 game. But then after that, Waynesburg special teams took hold. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And a 15-yard personal foul penalty charge to the Yellow Jackets after that scramble by Britt. Gets Westminster out to their own 47-yard line. Trip to the left for a first and 10 play. Dak Britt takes the shotgun snap, looks left, pressure. He's hit as he throws, incomplete as he is leveled by JT Thompson, 6'1 junior from East Liverpool. Second down and 10 now for Westminster. Big lick laid on Dak Britt by Thompson. Britt up on his feet. He's a tough customer, that's for sure. As you have to be a, as a running quarterback and uh, took a hard hit moments ago. Yeah, especially with as many carries and touches of the football. Well, obviously the quarterback touches the football in every play, but as many plays as he's initiated with his feet and his arm today, he's bound to take a couple of hits and a couple of brutal hits. Middle screen complete to Bonnets. Sidesteps one man at midfield. Gets ahead to the 46-yard line. 46-yard line. The 46 of Waynesburg on that play. Third down and three for Westminster. Toby Bonnets. He had the first turnover of this game, fumbled it at the Westminster 47-yard line early in the first quarter. Waynesburg drove it 47 yards, capped the drive on a 15-yard touchdown pass from Hill to Ferrero. Third down and three, Bonnet's open in the left flat, has the first down, lowers the shoulders and gets inside the 35-yard line to the 34 of Waynesburg. Colin Wallace on the perimeter. Giving Bonds a little bit of space to roam and get past the chains. Dak Britt, 155 yards passing. Coming into this quarter, 17 of 27. Does have two interceptions and one fumble lost. 82 yards rushing for Britt. First and 10, Westminster at the Waynesburg 34. Britt will keep it on the fake to Banks. 
Up the middle for minimal yardage. Gets to the 32 of the Yellow Jackets. Two yard pickup. Now Dak Britt, the team MVP for Westminster a year ago. Transfer from Tiffin, as is Carter Hill. Interesting that the two quarterbacks both transfers from Tiffin. All PAC honorable mention last year, Dak Britt. Carter Hill with the way he has performed this season, likely on his way to an all PAC selection as well. Second down and eight, 12.49 to go in the football game. Big lead for Waynesburg. Britt accepts the snap, looks right, lobs a pass, open Frankowski. Inside the 20, hurdles a man, dives forward inside the 15. And mark him on the long line at the 15-yard line. Frankowski with the catch, first down gainer for the Westminster Titans. He could be looking at a touchdown right now if he can keep his feet, keep his momentum heading towards that end zone. Frankowski, a couple of catches today. First and 10 from the Waynesburg 15. Shotgun, Britt, rolls right, Fedorka with the pressure, pass complete to David Wright at the 10 yard line, incomplete, out of bounds, say the officials. So no, no feet inbounds for Mr. Wright. Second and 10. Off that left edge, Fedorka brought the pressure. Forced Britt from delivering a strong throw. Threw that one from off his heels. Second down and 10. In motion bonnets from right to left, Britt will keep it. And a pile of humanity around the 12, 11 yard line where Britt is brought down. Thompson in the bottom of that pile for Waynesburg. 11.44 and counting, fourth quarter. Well, Westminster we talked about last week with a big win over Bethany. 7-6 block punt with 44 seconds to go by Dylan Heitmeyer. Heitmeyer with an interception today. And they were down by one score early in this second half, but Waynesburg has turned it up a notch. Now it's Tyler Banks' reception out of the backfield. Slides down around the seven-yard line. Be about a yard, yard and a half short. And bring up fourth down. Offense probably will stay on the field. Fourth and two. Frankowski and Benny Walter enter for Westminster as they bring in some more muscle for a fourth and two. Yeah, I think this might be a quarterback run here. I don't know if you need the muscle behind him, but we'll see just in case. Interesting formation here. He will have a chance to follow lead blockers if they go that route. Handoff Banks takes a wallop at the six yard line and it appears he is stonewalled by Waynesburg. He did not fall forward, he fell sideways and Banks is indeed stopped shy of the lead stick. A one yard pickup he needed too. Waynesburg takes over at their own six. Now the Waynesburg defense, I talked about the special teams in the third quarter, but the defense really set the tone early. First four possessions for Westminster ended in turnovers. Waynesburg overall has five turnovers forced today. And several turnover on downs as well. Yeah, they came to play today. It's, uh, I don't know, they might have to fight the offense and the special teams for best unit of the day, but certainly could have some consideration. And all three phases, Westminster, or Waynesburg just uh, has been very good today, very sound. Stay tuned in our post game. We'll hand out our Foster's Law Office's player of the game, Carter Hill pass to Thompson. Inbounds complete at the 16 yard line. Depending upon where they have it, they will be a first down for Thompson. So a 10 yard pickup on the pitch and catch, Hill to Thompson. 
Thompson with his sixth catch of the game. Give him 89 yards. Hill will hand it off for Scythe. Tries to duck down low, muscle his way, but not much there for Waynesburg on that run. Nate Mood, a part of the stop for the Titans. Now Carter Hill, we talked about earlier on, he's had six games this season with three plus touchdown passes. We'll make it seven, three touchdown passes today. He has five games with 300 plus passing yards. He's still under 300 so far, but has a chance to eclipse that. At 248 at the end of three quarters of play. With 9.32 to go, we have a timeout called by the Yellow Jackets. So that'll halt things for the time being. We'll take a timeout as well with Waynesburg. The score 38-13 Yellow Jackets in the fourth quarter on the PAC Sports Network. When you are in need of fast, affordable, and professional voiceovers, contact Time Ad Productions. Time Ad Productions offers voice services for business presentations, documentary narrations, radio television imaging and commercials, movie trailers, corporate phone systems, websites, audiobooks, and more. Visit or contact us online at www.timeadproductions.com. 38-13 Waynesburg in front over the Westminster Titans. 9.32 to go in this one. Out of town, Thomas Moore leading St. Vincent 31 to nothing. Dominique Hayden with another fine rushing performance today. Over 100 yards rushing for the Thomas Moore Saints and uh, had a record tying rushing performance last week with over 300 yards. We'll get to that in a moment. Carter Hill on second down, passing complete, intended for Andrew English, far sideline. Yeah, anyone else, uh, 29 carries, 123 yards and a touchdown would be a, a great afternoon, but it actually hurts his average. Hayden coming into today's game was averaging 218 yards per game, one of the best marks in the country. 327 yards rushing last week for Dominique Hayden. Third and 10 for Waynesburg with 9.26 to play. You okay? I'm good. All right. I'm juggling too many things right now. <laughs> Garter Hill will hand it off to Thomas Pallone. Fights his way to the 21-yard line. He's short of the first down by about five yards. So five-yard run by Pallone. Fourth down. Waynesburg playing conservatively, and they have the luxury. They're up 38-13. Checking out another score we were talking about all day. Bethany's come from behind against Teal. Bison now up 13-10 over the Tomcats. Teal was leading that one pretty much the entire afternoon until the fourth quarter. Also to backtrack real quickly uh, with uh, Dominic Hayden mentioned the 327 yards record tying tied a PAC single game rushing record with those 327 yards. Bethany, as you mentioned, trying to recover from their loss last week to Westminster. Westminster drops the punt, a muff punt recovered by Waynesburg, and the recovery by Blake Otter. Excuse me, am I? The recovery by Dante Gibson for the Yellow Jackets. 5'7 sophomore from Uniontown High School with the recovery on the dropped punt by Westminster's Corey Gribbon. Now Gribbon on the return, he just flat out dropped that one, went right through his arms. And thank you very much, says Dante Gibson. First and 10, Waynesburg with the sixth turnover of the game by the Westminster Titans. Ball at the 49 of Westminster. Carter Hill under center. Hand off Pallone. He'll reverse his field, trying to go back right side, but tripped up in the backfield. Nice job fighting off a block there for Westminster. Sean Cronenwetter, six foot, 226 pound senior from St. Mary's High School in St. Mary's, PA. Already engaged with the lineman, Cronenwetter down on the ground, able to reach out that left arm, get Pallone off his feet. It's like it's picking up a little bit in terms of the rain out here. 
we're under a covering, so that's good up here on the roof, but it's like all around us, it's starting to pick up a little bit. Loss of one on the run by Pallone. Second down and 11 at the midfield stripe. Carter Hill under center. Hand off Pallone. Nowhere to go. Brick wall set up by the Westminster Titans. Sean Christofferson and Nate Moots combine on the tackle. You mentioned the rain picking up. The officials drying off the football. The weather hasn't really decided what it wants to do today. We've seen sunshine, we've seen rain, nothing really that heavy, and the sunshine, not that bright. It's been just a, a gray afternoon. And yeah, we've seen the sun sparingly today. Third down and 11 for Waynesburg. Play action, Hill rolls out right. Pass incomplete out of bounds, but again playing it safe, Waynesburg will punt it away. So field position changing a bit after that muffed punt return by Corey Gribben of the Westminster Titans. Again recovered by Dante Gibson, but a three and out by Waynesburg and out to punt again, Dominic Zappa. Back deep to receive is Safante Slavine along with Gribben. Levine will call for the fair catch. It's Afonte Levine hauls it in at the 16 yard line. Seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter, 38-13. Waynesburg comfortably in front. Left on the schedule, Westminster. They still have a visit to Teal next week and then a home match with uh, Geneva on November 16th at Teal for a night game, then at home for an afternoon affair against Geneva. Waynesburg, they are idle next week and then a big visit to W&J. Dak Britt, flush from the pocket on the scramble, pass complete to Safante Levine near sideline. And the officials, no, they're going to say out of bounds. Safonte so Levine looks at the officials saying, are you kidding me? But rolled out of bounds, evidently both feet out of bounds. Levine's still petitioning. He's not going to win his argument. Second and 10, Westminster from their own 16. Very slowly marking that football. I think we got it all sorted out after that incomplete pass. Westminster second and 10 from the 16. Brett pass intended for Wallace. Pass intended for Connor Wallace. Those two just haven't been on the same page this afternoon. Brett's hit Wallace in the hands a couple times and their receiver has been unable to come up with those passes. We saw them in a little bit of a rhythm. Westminster's last drive of the first half, but other than that little spurt, the two really haven't connected for much this afternoon. 6.46 remaining, Dak Britt with a third and 10 for Westminster from their own 16 yard line. In the shotgun with Tyler Banks to his right. Britt stands in the pocket, deep ball, complete to Wallace down the far sideline. There's a flag thrown behind the play. Wallace is gonna go for the touchdown. It's an 84-yard touchdown pass if it stands. And it looks like it may stand. This will be a offsides, I believe, against Waynesburg. There's a flag down on the play. And the line judge from the near sideline is indicated offsides on Waynesburg. Our head referee does so as well. Touchdown indeed. Colin Wallace with an 84-yard touchdown reception. That's good. And a deep strike for the Westminster Titans. Brings this score to 38 to 19. Touchdown reception. That passed 84 yards. We can go with the 86 yard punt return for Terrence Savantes Levine, which is a school record. Westminster going for two after the touchdown. Trailing right now 38 to 19. And a little bit of confusion here. 
They like the competitive nature, but good sportsmanship uh, shown uh, in this NCAA game, Division Three. Uh, Colin Wallace and Marvin Sampson have been battling each other all game long, and after that touchdown by Wallace, the two kind of slap hands. And uh, Sampson, keep in mind, he has two interceptions today while guarding. Colin Wallace. This time Wallace uh, wins the battle with the 84-yard touchdown reception and just mutual respect between the two. You love to see that. Yeah, Samson shadowing him all day long, shadowing Wallace. and That hand slap is kind of like, okay, you got one on me there. 6.35 to go in the fourth quarter. Westminster going for two. It's a direct snap to Banks. Reverses it to Safante Slavine. Near sideline looking to throw. He's going to try and run, and he's buried in the backfield. As John Sakura with the tackle, and the two-point conversion fails. Score remains 38-19. to We'll be right back on the PAC Sports Network. We're here at Sport Clips, the new Just for Guys haircutting place to see what the buzz is about. How was it? Nice cut, nice price, professional stylist. Doesn't get any better than this. There's sports on TV at every chair. I got an awesome haircut, steam towel treatment, neck and shoulder massage. I went all the way! What are you waiting for? Sport Clips is now in your neighborhood. At Sport Clips, guys win. With two locations in Washington County, at the McMurray Shops in Peters Township, and at Trinity Point in Washington. Welcome back to Westminster. The Titans trailing Waynesburg 38 to 19. Moments ago, an 84-yard touchdown reception by Collis, Colin Wallace from Dak Britt. Onside kick attempt for Westminster, recovered by the Yellow Jackets at the Westminster 48-yard line. Andrew English with the hands team on the field, able to recover that one quite easily. And so Waynesburg will take it back over with 6:34 to go in the football game. We've had uh, some long-distance plays today with the 84-yard uh, reception by Wallace. Also an 86-yard punt return for a touchdown by Safante Slavine. Uh, block punt for a touchdown by the Waynesburg Yellow Jackets uh, in this uh, in this third or in the second half in the third quarter really was a momentum uh, swinging play. Waynesburg at the time up 24-13. They had the block punt by Tom Pallone. It was returned for a touchdown, and we'll get to that uh, that in a moment here. First and ten play at the 48, and a handoff up the middle. And Waynesburg fighting for yardage, minimal yardage there. It's Tom Pallone with the carry for Waynesburg. Tackled by Christofferson. Limited yardage, just one yard on the pickup by Pallone. But the punt return, uh, or the block punt that was returned for a touchdown, it appeared to us that it was a number 18 being Anthony Bruno for Waynesburg. But the folks uh, officially downstairs uh, ruling that it was Dante Gibson. Uh, so officially, anyway, we'll go with that. The official uh, ruling is that Dante Gibson with the return for the score. Dante Gibson also has a recovered fumble today on a muff punt by Westminster. Swing pass to Bernie Thompson and he slides down at the Westminster 43. But uh, some big time plays today, special teams and otherwise, but uh, you look back to that block punt, again it was 24-13 at the time, that really swayed things in Waynesburg's direction and there was no looking back from that point on. Well, momentum was swinging back and forth there at the start of the second half. And that Waynesburg lead was teetering a little bit at 21-13, and it was definitely a play that swung everything back in the Yellow Jackets' favor, and they really took that momentum off of that block punt return for a touchdown and went with it and ballooned the lead out to where it is now prior to that long pass from Britt to Wallace. Third down and five for Waynesburg, and a running play going right, Thomas Pallone. Pallone tiptoeing the sideline there, making sure he stayed in bounds, and I think by doing that, he actually made it past the chains for a first down, so the clock will stop for a second while they reset him, but then it will continue to roll inside of five minutes now to go in the ball game. And Waynesburg will definitely take their time here. In the huddle with 20 seconds on the play clock, they will run this down, breaking it at 14.
First and 10. And again, Waynesburg taking their time very much so. Down to two on the play clock. Pallone running right. And he stops smart running play there as he was around the 35-yard line, was able to fight for another yard. It could have had more if he continued his angle but out of bounds, but right now Pallone's more interested in taking time off the clock. And getting some help from the Waynesburg folks. So indeed it was Dante Gibson with the block punt return for a score. So that is indeed the uh, official ruling. And backed up. Carter Hill going deep. Andrew English makes, oh, almost made a one-handed catch again at his right arm tied up. But uh, no interference called. But Andrew English almost with a fantastic catch. Third down now for Waynesburg, third and seven. Had that ball cradled in his left arm. I thought he was going to come down with that. Jared Heck hanging on his right side. Well, nice luxury to have where you can throw it basically anywhere near Andrew English, and he'll at least have a chance to make a play on it. You've seen him go up top, down low this afternoon, all over the place. A big window to throw to. Definitely a big attribute to Carter Hill's success, not just today, but all season long. Yeah, English, the leading receiver for Waynesburg. Run by Pallone, escapes to the outside, first down and more, and tackled around the 10-yard line, and again, wisely stays inbounds to run more clock. Ball near the 10-yard line. Well, you have to love the intelligence of Thomas Pallone running the football, and that's the senior from Jeanette. I mean, he's getting the yards, but he's burning up the clock at the same time. And sometimes you don't see that, even at the uh, professional level. They, they, there's, uh, there's times where you see a play happen, and you think, well, why did you go out of bounds there? But uh, Thomas Pallone, twice on this drive, has been tight roping the sideline, but staying in bounds and dropping down in bounds. Pallone will receive a handoff again. Bounces outside around the 10. Hurdles a man. Flag thrown. Pallone dropped at the 8-yard line. But let's check the flag. Holding. 70 the offense. 10-yard penalty. Spot the foul. Will be a holding penalty on Waynesburg. Nick Sappy called for the holding penalty. Waynesburg backed up. 2.57 to go in this one. Waynesburg on their way to a victory, leading 38-19. to And so Waynesburg after this, one more to go, as uh, they, again, have hopes alive for a share of a PAC crown. To do it, they need to beat W&J in the regular season finale, but also they need Thomas Moore to slip up along their pathway in the final couple of games this season. So still a little bit, uh, they need to take care of their own, but Waynesburg also needs some outside help for uh, PAC Crown this year. Last year sharing the PAC title with WNJ. The Presidents, though, winning the head-to-head -head meeting and earning the NCAA Division III tournament bid, playoff bid, and, or the automatic bid, I should say. And Waynesburg as a result of that loss to WNJ last year, played Carnegie Mellon and defeated them in the ECAC South Bowl. Incomplete pass on a first down and long. Down to 2.17 to go. Last year, Waynesburg winning 28 to 24 over Carnegie Mellon. At Carnegie Mellon, they'll be in the PAC in football starting next season. And then in case Western coming in, Carnegie Mellon already playing a handful of PAC teams this year during the regular season portion of the schedule. So they got acclimated a little bit to the type of football that's played in the conference. Second down and 20 for Waynesburg. Swing pass to Pallone. Stopped at the 19 yard line of Westminster. Corey Neal leading the tacklers for the Titans.
Give him the 18-yard line of Westminster. Third down now for the Yellow Jackets. But again, they're more interested in burning clock. Down to 149 in this one. So Waynesburg will improve to 7-2 overall, 5-2 in PAC play. Westminster drops to 3-5 overall and 2-4 and in the President's Athletic Conference. Stay tuned after the game goes final. We'll hand out our Foster Law Office's player of the game. Here is Forsyth up the middle. Plows his way to the 14-yard line. Fourth down and 13 now for Waynesburg. Gain of four for Forsyth. Well, Waynesburg and Coach Rick Shepis have to be very satisfied with the performance today. Especially from the defense, six turnovers forced. One was by the special teams. Also had a block punt. He'll have to be pretty satisfied with all facets of the game, quite frankly. But uh, you look at the defense and special teams, the six turnovers set up short fields for the Waynesburg offense. You had uh, the block punt that was returned for a touchdown by Dante Gibson, a 15-yard return. And uh, really, the Waynesburg offense just uh, was the benefactor of all of that uh, with the points and short fields to work with. I definitely took advantage of it. Still had to punch it in, but set up with short fields all afternoon and by the same token the defense was set up with a lead all afternoon able to really pressure this Westminster attack and, and focus their attention to, to stopping Dak Britton. They've done a commendable job of that doubling up Westminster so far 38-19. Timeout called by Waynesburg as they were running time off the play clock and before a delay of game could occur. Waynesburg utilizing one of their timeouts. They have one more remaining. Westminster has all three, but timeouts don't matter much at this stage of the game. With 46 seconds to go, Waynesburg with a 38-19 advantage. Under center, Carter Hill. It's a running play right side for Forsyth. Dives inside the five. He is short of the first down, and Waynesburg will turn it over on downs to Westminster. No, Waynesburg with this one at hand, so not worried about putting more points on the board. Now the WJ presidents mentioned they were idle this week. And they'll return to action next week. And Thomas Moore this weekend, last we had, leading big over St. Vincent 31 to nothing. So they were on their way to another win. Hand off up the middle for Westminster. Across the 10-yard line to the 11-yard line. The run by Trey Sims. Sims with 113 yards and one rushing touchdown this season. Averages 3.4 yards per carry out of New Brighton High School. 5'6 junior with 19 seconds to play. Teal Tomcats with a 24 to 13 lead over the Bethany Bison with 156 to play. Now Bethany losing to uh, Westminster last week and in danger of losing again. That uh, last run by Trey Sims will do it as this one comes to a conclusion. 38-19, Waynesburg victorious here at Burry Stadium. So Waynesburg again improves to 7-2 overall, 5-2 in the conference. Westminster drops to 3-5 overall, 2-4 in PAC play. When we come back, we'll give you a quick recap and hand out our Foster Law Office's player of the game on the PAC Sports Network. Bankruptcy myths. Busted. I heard you lose everything you own when you file bankruptcy. The whole point of bankruptcy is to get a fresh start. And that's only possible if you have something to start with. In over 95% of bankruptcy cases, individuals keep everything they own, including their home, car, pension, and household goods. Myth busted. Bankruptcy myths busted. Brought to you by Foster Law Offices. Call today to schedule a free consultation and sleep better tonight.
For three generations, Sharps Furniture has been proud to serve Southwestern PA with their brand of personal service. Being an authorized dealer for Lazy Boy, they are dedicated to providing the finest quality products made here in the U.S. of A. Looking for custom upholstery? Sharps carries a large selection of upholstery to choose from, all made in America. And their friendly staff will deliver right to your front door. Sharps Furniture, your authorized Lazy Boy dealer. Family owned, family operated since 1917. Located just off I-70, exit 19B in Washington, PA. Disability affects the lives of over 29,000 people in Fayette, Washington, and Greene counties. Tri-County Patriots for Independent Living are people with and without disabilities working to meet those needs in the community. The success of Triple comes from the commitment of a dedicated board of directors, its members, and volunteers. To continue to improve services, Triple is renovating the historical YWCA building located at 42 West Maiden Street in Washington. This will allow for an assistive internet cafe, increased veteran services, and transportation and wellness to provide skills to help with independent living. Your help and feedback are appreciated. And if you seek assistance, we're here to help. And we are back from Westminster, the Yellow Jackets of Waynesburg with a 38-19 win over Westminster today. We'll give you a quick uh, recap of this one. In the first quarter, a couple of touchdown passes. Carter Hill, a 15-yard strike to Mike Ferrero, and a 17-yard pitching catch to Zach Kappen. Both of those touchdowns set up by turnovers on the first two drives by the Westminster Titans. They would actually turn it over on their first four possessions, six turnovers total by Westminster today. Waynesburg would uh, take a 21 to nothing lead by the 359 mark of the second quarter, three-yard rushing touchdown by Jake Forsythe. Westminster did get on the board late in the second quarter with eight seconds to go before halftime on a fourth and 20. A 24-yard touchdown pass, Dak Britt to Cody Allward made it a 21 to 6, and uh, Westminster seemed to have a little life heading into the locker room, and they came out of the locker room with a little bit of life as well. An 86-yard punt return for a touchdown by Terrence Afantes Levine made it 21 to 13. However, uh, that's the closest Westminster would come. That touchdown by Levine came at 12:23 on the clock in the third quarter. Waynesburg would start to open things up. A 31-yard field goal by Alex Henry, and then a blocked punt by Tom Pallone returned by a t or for a touchdown by Dante Gibson. A 15-yard return on the score with 7:47 on the third quarter clock made it 31-13, and then Waynesburg putting things away. 21-yard touchdown pass from Hill to Mike Ferrero, as it would be the second time those two hooked up. And then in the fourth quarter, uh, Westminster capped the scoring uh, with an 84-yard touchdown reception by Colin Wallace, the pass from Dak Britt. Colin Wallace uh, uh, getting over 100 yards receiving today. Uh, he ranks second in the conference, averaging 109 receiving yards per game. So he's uh, he, he maintains his average, so to speak, as uh, he's in the area of, of that tally once again. But uh, overall, uh, the Waynesburg defense, uh, if, if we're to give out, uh, I mean, this is a player of the game, award so uh, it can only go to one person but uh, for a unit the Waynesburg defense and special teams fantastic today but uh, our player of the game will be Waynesburg quarterback Carter Hill as uh, he put Waynesburg up early helping convert those turnovers into points and uh, ends the day with three touchdowns and uh, 260 some yards passing yeah 22 of 33 265 yards through the air three touchdowns uh, minimal yardage on the ground uh, but whenever he was set up with an opportunity given to him or afforded to him by the Waynesburg defense and special teams. That Waynesburg offense, led by Hill, certainly took advantage, able to get that early lead and then kind of sit on it a little bit. It got a little hairy there at the beginning of the second half, but uh, Waynesburg kind of riled the ship a little bit, and uh, Hill was a big part of that, able to uh, direct them to a win today. So congratulations to him for, uh, for an outstanding season, too. He's uh, been a, a huge part of this uh, transformation of the Yellow Jackets offense from a, from a rushing attack, primarily rushing attack, to a, a primary passing attack. A job well done by Carter Hill and the Waynesburg Yellow Jackets. Hill, our Foster's Law Office's player of the game. So uh, uh, thank you very much to the uh, folks at Foster's Law Office's uh, uh, for being on board for our fall broadcast schedule and uh, also congrats again to Carter Hill. So Waynesburg getting the job done today, 38-19 to over Westminster and uh, the important factor uh, of this victory today, Waynesburg keeps their conference title hopes alive. They need to beat W&J in the finale of the regular season and again receive some help along the way 
against Thomas Moore. Uh, Thomas Moore has to slip up for that to happen as well. Um, but uh, that's the scenario for Waynesburg. They do still have those conference title hopes for Westminster. Uh, they're plugging along in the... Uh, uh, things a little rough for them today. They did have some glimpses of success, but uh, far too many turnovers uh, to be able to pull off a victory this afternoon. So uh, that does it here from Westminster. The Yellow Jackets with the win, 38-19 over the Westminster Titans. For Justin Piles, my partner, Kat Guy, and our producer, Caitlin Edwards, our camera person today, I am Randy Gore. We will bid you a pleasant good afternoon on the PAC Sports Network.